Guardian down. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for spending your time with us today. Welcome to episode 165 of Guardian Outcast, a Destiny podcast. If you love to play the game Destiny 2, then you've come to the right place. We're a couple of gamer dads that have played Destiny since that day one release back in 2014, and we're just as passionate about it today as we were back then. We discuss key topics and news within the game and community, and we not only seek the stories of Destiny content creators, but we're a podcast that gives a voice to the stories of our Destiny gamers out there. And in this game, it's all about community, right? We're the show that yeah, asks... The friend game is the end game. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Deej. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yep. I'm your host, The Gator. And my co-host, Hazel, is here as well. Hey, man. How's your week been? Oh, man. I don't even know. Uh, work is getting crazy, and I haven't barely been in the Discord. So it's just just utter and complete chaos. But uh I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. So Yeah. Sounds good. What about you? Yeah, I've been uh been very consistent. I'm releasing uh the new player series content on my YouTube channel. That's G A T R. Don't forget those underscores, shameless plug. And um yeah, I've been getting oh man, been getting great reception from that. I uh I just eclipsed the five hundred mark on subs. Thank you, everyone out there who has been subbing to my channel. We thank you. I'm just a small little frog in a big destiny pond, so to speak, but I do appreciate the support. But other than that, Didn't it's you been. Say you're a, you're a you know, small gator in a. Oh, pond. that's better. I need, I need you. Hold on. Let me write that down. Yeah. I'm a small gator in a big destiny pond. Yeah. I like that. I like the, I like the, yeah. I like the sound of that. Good one, Hazel. Good. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, hey, if you guys haven't figured it out, it's just a Gator and Hazel show tonight. And, uh, you know, it's still going to be an exciting show, though. We got a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. And what we have lined up front of the show tonight, we're going to hear about what, of course, what we've been doing this week in Destiny. Hazel's going to go over this week at Bungie for the fourth week of Season of Plunder. And I heard that's a doozy. Uh, we have another topic of the week to discuss. Then we're going to go and answer your questions from our speak pipes to our Discord server. As you can see, it's another busy night. So let's roll. Thanks for listening to Guardian Downcast. You can find us on Twitter at Guardian underscore D underscore cast. Or you can find us on Instagram at guardian underscore down underscore cast and see what picks our weekly guests want to share with you. Or just visit our website at guardiandowncast.com for all the contact info and where else to find us. And you can also play any past episodes you like in any order you like right from your browser. Man, don't or or me. Hey, guardians, while you're at it, Follow our Guardian Downcast show playlist on Spotify and iTunes. We post those links in our show description every week. So check us out and later, Guardian. Toddles. All right, Hazel. What have you been doing this week, man? What, what, what has been going on in the Destiny world this week for you? Oh man. Um, I hit rank. What rank is it here? Uh, 19 on my callus mini tool. Oh, so you can get so the for, enhanced mods. Well, yeah. So, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, I think it's not even, you don't even have to hit 20. Uh, I think I was so 18, maybe 17, and I hit, uh, enhanced incandescent. Yep. That's the one to get. So, so yeah, so I have enhanced unrelenting and enhanced incandescent. Wow, so you're going to get and, health uh, and destroy. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty nasty. Yeah, and then uh, Kingsley shared a video about the unkillable warlock. So, so follow me here. So you use a healing grenade on the ground. Mm -hmm. and you get restoration times two. Then 
you go ahead and you have slot in Empyrean. Yeah. Ember of Empyrean. So it's extended restoration. Okay. Or radiant. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, or no, I'm sorry, that's Solus. Uh, Empyrean is the one that gives you, uh, extended duration for the every effects. solar weapon kill. Okay. Or ability qu- kill. Gotcha. So you figure, okay, so I get restoration times two, and then I'm murdering everything with my Kalos mini tool, which is solar. So I'm keeping restoration times two procced pretty much all the time for 12 seconds. And then I also have Ember of Ashes on. So that means that I apply more Scorch stacks on top of the enhanced perk for Incandescent, which is more enhanced uh, or more uh, Scorch as well. And then uh, just for fun, I put on Ember of Wonder, which is rapidly defeating multiple targets with solar ignitions generate an orb of power. So there's tons of orbs being generated, and I have restoration times two, and I need to really switch off of Well of Radiance just because it's useless for this build, because I pretty much play this like a Titan, and I just run into everything, murdering everything. Really? Using yeah. the uh, snap? No, uh, Celestial Fire. Oh, Okay. I got you. The three. Yeah, so yeah. that way I can use range. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. If a range attack. Yeah. Nice. Well, let yeah. me, I got the a question. is okay, but yeah. I don't know. Since, uh, classy restoration's gone, it, it was the last, uh, last season's really great perk for, as far as restoration on that solar 3.0. Ha, has it changed really how you, how you build things differently or is it still, does a regular restoration trigger pretty easily? Well, no, man. It's, uh, you use the healing grenade. Oh, that's what you Which gives you restoration times two. That's how you're doing it. Okay. That's the trigger. Yeah. So you don't even need classy restoration because you just throw a healing grenade down and you get restoration times two. Yeah. I'll be putting that together tomorrow for the raid. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, uh, you, but you have to use, what is it? Touch of flame with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Sorry. That's the aspect. Touch of flame. So that way it gives you the enhanced, it improves, uh, restoration. So it's restoration times two. Okay. Well, hopefully someone else. And then you can use. use Yeah, exactly. Then you can use Icarus Dash or Heat Rises, whichever one you want. So, really makes mm-hmm. no difference. I don't really care for either one of them. Heat Rise or uh, Icarus Dash is fun just because it gets me to into the battle quicker. Yeah, so. that's what all the that's all the uh, PVPers use if they're going to use that that class. And yeah, well, I'm, dude, I'm I I don't I don't I know. really PVP I know. too much. So I'm just saying for PVE me- I got you. measures, it's like okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw myself into the shit with. Restoration times two and then smack can, people around. Then you can, uh, if some, something's coming at you tough, then you can just Icarus dash away. It's pretty sweet. Eh, yeah. I mean, dude, you don't even have to worry about that. Yeah, you're just unkillable. That's I mean, sweet. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I'll be putting that on tomorrow. I rest assured. Yeah. It's hard to, yeah, for me to yeah, get off my void lock, but uh, that sounds pretty enticing. Yeah, I, I get it with the void, but um, with this, I mean, this is the closest thing I can get to a Titan on a Warlock, so I'll take it. Mm-hmm. But uh, one thing I did want to say, though, is that um, not to bring the show down, but uh, so I've been pretty much MIA from the Discord for probably like two or three weeks now. Yeah, I've noticed. And uh, yeah, uh, so I'm basically dealing with some stuff with my parents. They're getting older and my mom is pre-dementia. So she's uh, kind of losing her mind a little bit. So, uh, there's that. My dad has Parkinson's. It's, uh, just a whole bunch of fun stuff going on for me right now. And I'm, uh, basically taking over their finances, making sure bills get paid, trying to get them to move down here closer to me. It's just a whole thing. So uh, if I'm not in the discord or if I miss somebody, uh, when you come in, I apologize. I've been trying to, you know, keep an eye on it and that kind of thing. But, uh, so Brittany, I say all that to say that you can probably catch up to me, uh, maybe in maybe a week or two. So don't tell Hades. Good luck. Oh, too bad. (laughs) Too late. Hades is like in third. I I know he's moving fast. I just ranked up today. He was like, I just hit 59 today. And and Hades is like, no, I almost caught you. I'm like, no, so sad. Yeah. Yep. Well, man, I, I know we've been talking about it for a few weeks now. I'm, I'm sorry yeah. you're having to go through that, man. And hey, that's why, that's why we, we're, we're a team, right? I'll take over when, uh, you know, I had some rough times with my dad 
just about a month or two ago and you covered for me in the, in the discord. So yeah, man, we got your back. We'll cover you. No big deal. We'll get you. Yeah. I just, yeah. uh, I, I appreciate you. I, and you have a, and you have a job, a full time job and you have a family to run and a little girl. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. So no yeah. one's going to fault yeah. you with it, with, with being a little less, you know, present. We understand. Yeah. But I hold myself accountable. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I love our community and I, you know, I mean, nothing makes me laugh more than to see average D2 player in there, like giving me shit about saying good morning, everyone. And he's like, Hey, it's afternoon here. So I, (laughs) it just makes me smile. It It makes me smile. It does. So, yeah, but yeah, I'm still playing, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, I did throw out two scrims FYI. Mm -hmm. So. There we go. I'll yeah. talk about that probably at the end. Yeah, we'll do that with announcements. Yeah, that's exciting. I already joined up for the first one. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, man? What are you been up to? I've, uh, you know, uh, being at, I'm, uh, con- you know, creating more content this week. Uh, you know, we had our latest playing favorites out this week as well. So I've been working on that. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, a YouTube channel and, and, and hey, I got to play the game too, right? I, uh, I played this week's story. It was very short, which I've kind of appreciated because, uh, I wanted to get caught up on the story, but, uh, what I, is I, up with these stories? They was really short. It's like, yeah. it's like they're just like throwing shit at a wall, hoping it sticks, I guess. I, I don't know. But we have, we have a question about that. But oh, go good, ahead. Um, good. Once you, once yeah. you talk about, um, the season or like the story, yeah. I'll throw in that question. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. I, um, yeah, we'll, we'll probably do most of our discussion in the 12 because it's pretty spicy this week. Um, it I, is. I, um, did you see the same 12 I saw? Yeah. I saw it. Yeah, there, it's, there, there there's been a lot shit in this talk. Well, there's there's been a lot of lot of talk around the the community lately, and we'll get into it. But <clears> yeah, I've been uh, you know I've I've uh, been doing I've been doing my bounties, getting my, I'm at uh, I'm at uh, rank ninety four ninety three on my season pass now. I'm getting there. Can't wait to get that multicolored uh, ornament at the end for level one hundred for that new fusion rifle. It's gonna be pretty cool, uh, psychedelic nice. to say the least. Um, no, I've just been, um, you know, I have kind of have my routine I do every day and then, um, gosh, I, I don't even think I've raided this week yet. Well, I've got two back to back raids this weekend, so I'm looking forward to doing those. In fact, um, uh, Mr. Monkey's son is, um, is we're going to be running him through his first King's fall tomorrow. So we've got a, Ooh. he's got a lot of support around him. He, he privately put this together for the last couple of weeks. I'm nice. looking forward to. His son realizing how how cool raiding is, you know, it's really the, it's really the the coolest thing in Destiny Two. But yeah, that's been it pretty much for me. It's been kind of a lighter week. Um, I mean, last week I know I was talking about how it was like the most perfect week, and you know, it was a little slower this week, but that's a good thing sometimes. You know, you got to recharge and play at your speed. So that's what I did this week. But um did want to throw out that um, two questions. Uh, one of them is from Hammer Crasher. Mm-hmm. Question for the show. Have you noticed the pirate hideouts have been repurposed lost sectors for Mars or from Mars and the Tangled Shore? Do you think they'll be uh, bring back master or legend hideouts later this season? Hmm. Seems like a lot of effort to put hideouts together to only run them one time. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving those hideouts. That's when, when, uh, you know, I complete my expedition and it's, it's time to go raid, time to go plunder the boss. That's my, that's the most exciting thing for me is getting that treasure, you know, that, that artifact to bring back. And, um, I always do it solo because it's not really difficult to do. You just got to pace yourself. And, um, I didn't even notice that it was repurposed until Night Demon said something last week. Uh, I was on the Guardian Hub podcast last week. Shout out to Sin Media. Uh, he, he messaged me and wanted me to, uh, Kingsley had COVID and, um, and, uh, Des was having, uh, I don't think he could make it that night. So I filled in for him and we, we discussed that. And Night Demon jumped in and talked to us as well. And he's like, yeah, did you notice it was a lost sector? I'm like, no, man. I, I thought it was just a brand new map, brand new, uh, you know, play area. And I didn't even, then I started looking around today this week when I did, uh, this week's. I'm like, sure enough, it is. It's a repurposed law sector. The way they deliver mm-hmm. it, though, it's really tricky. You don't, it doesn't feel like it. But yeah, that would be kind of cool. A master one? What do you think? Oh, yeah. I think it definitely needs master stuff. I mean, you know, you know me, I'm, I'm all about the, the end game and I mean, the hardcore stuff where I'm like, you know, make it harder on me. I, I, I want to feel it. 
Hashtag five percenter. Hashtag five percenter, man. Pinky in the air. There we go. Uh, yep. <laughs> sorry, I have exactly. to give you our time over that. Um, hey, no, I mean, the thing is, though, is that, I mean, <laughs> call me what you will, but oh, I I'm just, just giving you love shit. doing the hard stuff. No, I get it. But yeah. no, I just like doing the hard stuff. I, I know. I, I, mean, I totally get it, too. Just, I mean, there's just something about it where it makes me feel like I accomplished something because for the most part, I mean, we are stupid powerful in this game. Yeah, we are. And it just doesn't. I mean, it just seems sort of like we're almost gods. We're pretty dang close. Pretty much, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, look at so, all the trees, what I we mean, can do now. Jeez. Well, exactly. And if so if I can find like some content where it actually is a challenge and I'm actually afraid of dying and things like this, it's like, okay, that's good. You know? It makes me feel, I guess, human. It makes me feel vulnerable, like uh, the legend mm-hmm. campaign. Mm-hmm. I, I give you shit over it, but the reason why I give you shit over it is because I like to do a lot of stuff solo. I'm one of those solo players out there that likes to try to grind through some of the some of the tougher stuff without having to um, get in a group. And it's not that I'm antisocial. It's just my introverted ways. It's kind of my way I recharge. And um, I'm sometimes I'm just a loner when it comes to stuff. I'll I'll put you know I'll I'll get on PlayStation. I'll put that I'm not online. I'll be hidden, and uh, my clanmates know I'm there. But there's times when I like to jump into some harder stuff, but I know I can't do it alone because it's just hard enough where I need someone to help me. And I, that frustrates me a little bit, but hey, that's what, that's what's there for, right? It's for the people who want to step it up and, you know, let the world burn a little bit, right? Well, I mean, what I would say would be it's more for like, I mean, like, have you done any, uh, like, well, I think it was, Maybe last week or the week after, I soloed uh, the Nightfall, Master Nightfall. Really? No, I thought we'd even yeah. come close to that. I don't think yeah, so. I mean, it's just it's just one of those things where it's like you know, it's just fun to kind of feel humble again. Yeah, like like you know, it's fun to get your ass kicked every now and then. Oh, oh absolutely. I, I miss those days in Destiny One where I had, was trying to solo Nightfalls, and it took so many times to go back to orbit and come back and try again. But you would learn on each encounter what worked and what didn't work. And eventually you w- you made your way through it. And when it would, you got it done, it was, you felt like it was an accomplishment. And of course you got some cool oh, yeah. loot. You got some cool loot too. So exactly. Which is why I love doing grandmasters. I mean, because yeah. for the exact same reason that you said there is yeah. that, you know, like the first time you're going through it and you're like, okay, this is a slog and mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm doing and everything else. It's just all about the learning game. Right. Right. What was the other question you had? Uh, so the other one, uh, follows up directly to this from actually average D2 player Hmm. question for the show, possible spoilers after completing the pirate hideout this week, it very much looks like there's another enemy that has joined the hunt for the relics. Any guesses as to who this might be? That's right. Also, who would you love it to be? Yeah. I heard about this in the story this week. That there was someone else, you know, fighting that person as well. Um, well, yeah, yeah, whoever it was, like, basically. Because they like, cleaned out the heart out, Ransacked right? everything. Right. Yeah. When you get there, it's like there's, it's like a skeleton crew. Yeah. Well, no, they just all got their asses kicked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get there and it's just bodies. Uh, I don't know, man. Who do you think it could be? Well, who, I mean, anybody I mean, you'd like to see? I mean, maybe. Like, Savathun would be kind of cool, I think. Yeah. What if the Drifter's doing something behind her <laughs> behind her backs? It's not Drifter, man. No. All right. No. Come on, man. He's busy He's banking moats to... for next season. By banking moats, do you mean like darkness? Like trying to get with Eris Morn and oh, I don't. Boots? I don't know. I don't know about that part, but uh, someone what? was speculating uh-huh. in, in some of the lore that are you uh, even are you even. Like keeping up with the lore, man. I, I don't. I don't keep up with the lore. I need to read the cards. Oh, I've unlocked them. I just haven't had a man. chance to read them. I know. I need to sit Dude. down one afternoon and just start reading through it. Yeah, you talking about this so, se- this okay. season's cards, right? Well, I mean, even last season too. Mm-hmm. So Drifter and Eris Morn are like a thing right now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're like a couple ish kind of thing. So see, if you don't so, read yeah, the lore, so. you'd never know this. Because well, you don't you see would, it in game. Actually, yeah, you do. You, you do? hear it. Oh, okay. Yeah, they like 
they flirted and stuff like that. I mean, you I need remember to that. stop like watching YouTube videos and stuff like that while you're playing. I know, playing. man. I'm, I'm multitasking. Yeah, but you're right. missing shit. I know. I, I believe me. It's been on my list. I need to read the lore because the lore, the lore just adds another dimension to the game. It, it really does. Oh, yeah. And I, I have, I, I've been really bad about not re- keeping up with the lore. And that's, you know, that's why I tune into Mylan, right? But, uh, it's a cheat. I know it's cheating, but still. Mm-hmm. I love that. Well, then man. you got the stuff with Spider too. So, oh, I mean, oh, no, I definitely hear that. I, I mean, it, that you can hear in game. Like, um, well, yeah, just like the, I mean, cause yeah, that's what Drifter and Eris were flirting back and forth. Like, what, like last week, a week before. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, know, I was just trying to get my, I just wanted my Titan boots that the green ones. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did, wait, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did you get on the Ingram this week? Same thing everybody else did. The SMG and Red the Red Bar. Box. Yes. Thanks to uh, thanks to Ido. Oh, that's right. She was making sure she she was helping us out. Well, <sighs> she basically went in and like tinkered with whatever Spider was up to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. So. It was. I was excited because I was like, okay, here come my skinny pants again. And there it was. I was like, oh, sweet, one less Red Bar I got to worry about. So, of course, so who do you? Th- do you have any idea as to who you think it is or? Oh man. Well, um, I'm thinking about, you know, going into next season, right? Going into the. It doesn't have to be next no. season. It can be, I mean, it can be anybody. I mean, we, hell, we don't know anything about next season. Yeah, that's true. Well, let's think about it. What are these uh, artifacts used for? They're going to be used for something evil, right? They have something about darkness involved with them. At least that's what I've been hearing around the, around the horn. That there's human parts or some kind of body parts in these things? I don't know. Yeah, there's some type of biological biological stuff in thing there. in it, right? Ah, man, I I'm drawing a blank. I I really have no clue who could be competing with us to get those. No, yeah. I'm I don't know how far into this they're going to go, but I'm thinking it's going to be some half-hearted BS. Like it's going to be Spider trying to like screw us over. I hope it's not. I hope it's something more creative than that. But I don't know. I kind of feel this is like a throwaway season to a degree. Mm, it's a fun season. Besides the fact that throwaway season. Yeah. Yeah. So, I thing. mean, besides the fact that Aramis came back, that it's just sort of mm-hmm. here. We, we just so kind of. I'm thinking that. Good. Uh, I'm just thinking that it's probably going to be like Spider and we just end up screwing him over and. He's just like, all right, fine. Take your Sarah fight or whatever he says. Yeah. And he, he's I'll definitely been the, selling. I'll go back to selling shit for you again. Yeah. He's, I think he's you definitely, know. uh, you know, he's been, uh, put in his place this season, so to speak. So I'm sure he doesn't, I'm sure he's not sitting well with that, but come on spider yeah, dishonest. Yeah. Come on. Really? <laughs> yeah. Do, like, do you even play the game at that point? Dude, do you destiny? Stuff like that? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, he's a shit. I'm being sarcastic. Game, so. I, I mean, he did attach a bomb to, uh, I'm sorry, Crow. Crow's ghost. Yeah, that was a little, that was a little terrible. Yeah, that wasn't not yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. I know a little of the lore, yeah. but not, not enough, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. But I do, though. I think it's going to be, unfortunately, Spider. And I think that we're going to, you know, shortchange him and that kind of thing. Uh, I would pay, actually, not that I haven't already paid for the season, but um, I would pay for it to be like Mara. Oh, God, really? You know, just some twist where it's like, oh, you know, to give this whole season credence. Man, so, we have heard from her in a while. Yeah, I know. That's the reason I think it, I mean, that'd be cool to see, see it be her. I wonder what she's so. up to right now. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, wait for that OnlyFans. But, yeah. Uh, oh, well, I, I'm in. Sorry. I'm whoa. In. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. What? <laughs> she huh? has an OnlyFans what? channel. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> oh, never boy. mind. Hey, look at the time. Oh, okay. yeah. We got a twab to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <Ooh>. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking nothing of. Nothing to see here. <laughs> yeah, nothing to see here. All right. <laughs> speaking of which, let's, let's move on. That means we're moving on to this week at Bungie. Uh, hey, Hazel, we need to uh, record another Adma, dude. Haven't we done enough of these? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But we're getting feedback from our community that they're getting old. So come on. Let's just do it real quick. All right. Do I need to run this by Laz first? No, no, no. We're fine. We're fine. 
Hey everyone, we just wanted to let everyone know that if you're looking for a clan, we have a Destiny 2 clan and we invite you all to be a part of it. All we ask is that you join our Discord community and just enjoy playing the game. We will communicate with you there and you'll also be assigned a special clan role as well and a channel. So look for the invite link in our Discord, in our GDC clan channel, or you can click the link right down there below in our show description. Yep, our Discord community is pretty awesome. And we have hundreds of active, like-minded Destiny 2 gamers in there. Also, we have a special 100.io bot that can put together groups for whatever you want to get done. So hit that link, join our community at discord.gg slash guardian downcast. And if you want to be in our clan, just let one of our mods know and we'll open the door for you. All right, enough of this shameless plug. That's it. Cut. Okay, fine. Jeez. Later, Guardian. Laz? No, okay, I'm out. All right, Hazel. Fourth week of Season of Plunder, man. What's going on in the TWAB this week? Okay. Um, You said earlier that it was a spicy one, but I don't really think it's that spicy, honestly. So, okay. So, for this one, uh, Master King's Fall comes out on Tuesday. That reset. Aside from that... Battle Eye is working as intended, and they are actually increasing the sort of like the the detection for this. Uh, fun fact: during the course of this podcast, I've been playing Destiny Two, and guess what happened? What? I got an error code plum. What? Uh, it said that Battle Eye has like caught you, and I'm like, the fuck? What? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, FYI, I am not cheating in any way, shape, or form. Um, but I did some checking into error code plum, and it said that basically my windows might be out of date. So there is an update that's sitting out there, so I oh. I'll have to download that. Oh, you're so, like your windows so, windows, not your – got you. Your system needs to be an updated. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you thinking like house windows? No, no, no. I was thinking about your op- like open windows that you have running the game. Never mind. Oh, I'm like, I'm like Maybe, you know, because sometimes sometimes you need to refresh your window because sometimes yeah, the, no, 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 no. So your actual operating uh, system got you. Yep, yep. So okay. if you get error code plum on uh, PC, then uh, just FYI, update your. Uh, you have, probably have an update out there, so do that, and you can destiny again. Quick question. Um, Quick question. Um, are you going to yeah. talk about any more of the Master uh, King's Fall? Um, I'll 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 okay. move on to it. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So, um, one thing I did want to mention regarding Battle Eye. This absolutely warmed my heart, and I'm sure Gator like passed out due to lack of blood flow what? because it went to a certain part of his body. Oh. Um. So, some people. So this is from the Twab. Some people whose accounts were banned have said they don't remember cheating. Oh, I know. I heard this. <laughs> when we investigate these cases, we often find they gave their account to someone else to play the game for them. We again remind everyone that you must protect your account and do not use account recovery services. Saying that your fingers were not on the keyboard when cheating occurred will not be considered during an appeal. Okay, can I say it? Can I say it? Suck it, cheaters. Suck it. <laughs> um, I was I well, was so happy to hear that because don't do account recoves. It's against TOS, re- by the way. You can get banned for that too. Re- recovery to me is not cheating. I disagree, but that's okay because it's not you I mean, playing. We talked to- it's not, but I mean, is there a difference between like who was it? Like Nate Fu that had his wife pick up Gallahorn? Well, that's different. That's that's wait is it is it in that case it's different and she's not is jumping it? into crucible to go play some comp see my point but but someone else is still playing the account yeah but she just went to the tower I mean battle eye didn't where care do you about draw the, the line well the battle eye knows where? they'll know if they're at the tower and they're they're if you're hiring some people to go play comp for you so you can get that that final title uh it's the last season for that and then. That's on you if they use cheats to get ahead. I mean, these these people aren't aren't in it for the goodness of their heart. They're in it to make a buck. And if that means they can then put some cheats on the game, and hell, they don't care. It's your account. If they get stung, it's not on them. It's on you. So that's on you, man. 
If you're hiring people to log in, which by God, who the hell would allow someone to log into their account? You realize they can get your credit card information and everything out of that? I don't know if people realize that. No, they can't get your credit card. They can log, if they go, it depends what you're using, but whatever you have registered with that account, they can go to your account settings on your, on the same platform and look it up. Yeah, not exactly. If you have I some mean, safeguards in place, you're okay, but. It, well, I know, think most places, most like, places will just say like, Hey, you know, like they like, co- like you like X's over your card number, except for the last four mm. and stuff like that. Well, but what, again, it is, it all comes down to don't give your shit out to don't, other people. Don't do it. Come on, man. Don't, don't do that shit. It, it's not worth it. It's not. I mean, just go play comp and get good. Oops. I mean, hey, go play, line, go man. play, go play comp and learn how to get better. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's my line. Man. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Iron banter, a post eruption look. All right. So. Iron Banner. Okay, everybody pretty much liked Eruption. I love Like it. with anything, there's always going to be some people that don't like it, mm. but piss on those people. We don't listen. We don't care about those people. They don't like anything. They don't like Christmas. They don't like, you know, gifts. They, you know, it, mm-hmm. we don't, we don't listen to those people. Not really. But, Hashtag blessed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I just died inside a little. Mm. Um, hey, hey, did you have a pumpkin spice latte when you said that? No, I'm I'm actually sipping on a, you would, you, I'm close. I'm not pumpkin spice tonight, but I'm, um, uh, what, what is it? Uh, shit, I'm trying to get a taste. It's a, a pecan. Boulders and Ugg boots? No, it's a pecan. It's a pecan coffee. (laughs) It's like a, it's like a butter pecan. It's like butter pecan. It doesn't sound like Folgers. No, it's not Folgers. It's, um. It's is it Maxwell House? No, it's Community it's Coffee. It's a local brewer, uh, oh. local coffee company. It's Look good coffee. You graduating? I've Look always, you. I've always loved Community Coffee. If you ever see Community Coffee, try it. It's really good. Good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, he's growing up. And now, now, don't fuck do they grow up so fast? Full disclosure: I have Maxwell House and Folder K Cup pods as well. I just didn't use them tonight. <laughs> and there I go back. There I go back down yeah. in the dumps. All right. Now, anyway, we're back to the show. All right. So, Eruption was a hit. Everybody liked it. Uh, Fun fact. There was a scoring issue. (laughs) So, that said, uh, we are aware of a bug where shutdown points were being awarded for each damage participant. This is not intended and is causing larger swings in (laughs) team scores than intended. (laughs) That would make sense. We are actively investigating this issue and are looking to get a fix for the second week. Okay. Bungie? Bungie, listen to me. Don't touch do it. it. Don't touch it. Just leave it alone. Look the other way, Bungie. Just, yeah, yeah. There's nothing to see nothing here. Nothing to see here. It's it's working fine. <laughs> you know why? It made the games fun. It did. It did. You know it. It was fun. Oh my god. I mean, they're gonna. I mean, I hope they like minimize, like loosen it just a little bit, maybe make it so it's not as crazy, but. It's just like, come on. We had several of those games. You know? It was a lot of fun. I know. It was fun. It was like, wow, you know, this is really cool. You feel like you're doing something. I mean, it's I already mean, mayhem, pretty much. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, kind of. Okay. Control. Dun, dun, dun. Uh-oh. Controversy. A-A-A. SBMM. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first of many controversies uh, mm. this week. Jump head first off of a bridge for this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so SBMM. So pretty much, SBMM is working as intended ish. Latency. They did go ahead and um, basically change it so that it's going to loosen up some. So like, if there's high latency, they're going to open up uh, more of. Uh, they're going to open it up so basically you can get uh, – they're sacrificing basically matchmaking time for the sake of better quality matches. Right. With latency. So, again, as with anything, if you're in the middle, you're not really going to experience any issues. If you're near one of the ends, it will take a little bit more time. You know, I but don't – if it does take more time, though, real quick here, uh, it's going to increase – 
it's going to search for better connection quality over uh, skill. Mm-hmm. They, so, I mean, they said, I don't, know why they, I don't even know why they're stating this because they already said they were going to fine tune it over time. That just goes back to that well, point. I, it, they're only saying it just to let everybody know that, hey, we're still doing stuff. Yes. It's not perfect. Yep. True Vanguard, put it back in your pants. Yeah, no. He you was, don't need to do a video every week about how <laughs> shitty SBMM is. He was not happy. But for real, it's like, dude, do you need to do a video every week about this? Just He's move in the on top with 1% your life, of players. Okay? I mean, come on. Okay. And I mean, and you're going to see some anomalies, and, but you know what? I got to, I got to give True Vanguard. Uh, some props here because he always plays solo. He could easily, and he even said in his video, he could easily get a bunch of uh, bangers out there and get a get a a rogue killing machine put together and just pub stomp and ru- run over everybody. But no, he runs solo. I I respect that. He's he's always done that, by the way. Whether it was a battlefield he's or always whatever. solo though. No, I mean he's he, not always he, solo. He, about I mean, ninety ninety five percent of the Fallout time. And 95% I've seen him run with Fallout. Ninety five percent of the time, like a crew. He does a crew. Yeah, I've seen like, him run with a crew before. He yeah. does it like at night on his off time, and also, uh, you know, every like as an like an event, but very rarely does he. He always plays solo. I watch his streams a lot. Mm-hmm. It might just be the times he plays. Mm-hmm. People aren't on, but if he plays later on in the day, I mean, I've seen him with like a crew, and I've seen yeah. him play with Fallout, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But he's not okay. putting he's not putting slamming you know slamming teams together and full six stacks well, and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I mean, did see that stream where he had a bunch of uh, bangers on there, so it, uh, they it were happens. But come on, he's entitled to that, you know. I'm not. I'm not going to give the guy shit. I'm not going to eat his lunch. Come on. It's like, you know, if you could, wouldn't you? I mean, at least every now and then. Exactly. I mean, just it's to the get the frustration of, the job. of solo playing. Solo playing could be very up and down. But you know what, though? The man has bad games, and he's not afraid to edit. He doesn't edit it out. Everyone sees it. So that he's human. God, imagine that. He's human. Well, in his videos, they're only highlights, but. Yeah, yeah, but if you're watching his stream, the- you're seeing it all. Yeah. Well, I don't watch his streams because oh. I just don't like him. But yeah. oh, All right. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I especially lost like a lot of respect for him when he's like, have empathy for the streamers who are complaining about this. And I'm like, dude, go take a hike. I remember <laughs> I remember Cammy Cakes would play with his aim trainer while they waited for a match. That's how long he had to yeah. wait. And then he'd match up with the same people. Yeah. I got to admit, that gets frustrating. I'm but, sure. But, but, you know, there's other playlists. That's my point. Well, there are other playlists. And the other side of it, too, is that, I mean, I, this is a hot take. Uh, super spicy. Uh, Destiny PvP is not competitive. That's, yeah. I've come to that. I, I came to that conclusion two se- three seasons ago. So I don't get as salty as I used to. Once you realize yeah. it's just for fun, and I, I I enjoy the social aspect of it more than I do actually winning and losing now. I mean, exactly. I, I want to do well. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to just lay down. But if it's a bad game, it's a bad game. I just don't get upset exactly. anymore any, over it. So, yeah, yeah. Your your stats only matter to you. They yep. don't matter to anybody else. Basically. Exactly. Like, dude, I'm super excited. I have a KDA of one point two two. Hey, my KD's I'm gone like- down ever since skill base has been put in place. Mine's gone. I mean, my uh, my KD, my actual KD is like one three six now. It was one five eight. So I mean, it's definitely mm-hmm. taken a dip from the skill base. But hey, I mean, that's the way it goes. If I want to play control, I got to play skill based. Yeah, so, exactly. That's the way it is. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing regarding controversy this week is the quitter penalty. Mm. So, uh, they basically go on to say that, um, <clears throat> that it is basically, um, the suspension timer for control are temporarily shared with the competitive playlists. So glory and trials. They are actively working on separating the suspension timer for competitive versus control. Mm. Because I don't know if you saw this or not, but if somebody like got the quitter penalty, it said like it was for comp. Yeah, I noticed. I figured and it was a placeholder. Yeah, that's what I figured when I saw the thing. I didn't. I've never. I haven't. I don't even know the last time I quit a match. I, just I've, because yeah, I've quit. Before. I, I just 
I just stick it out. I'm just like, I, it makes no difference to me because my numbers are my numbers and it is what it is. You, you know, you're, uh, I think it affects your ELO if, even if you quit. So I mean, maybe not. I don't care. But, I mean, I'm not all I'm about sure that it stuff, does. It but I've, I've had to quit I mean, before because my wife will walk in and she's like, I need you to go help me with something. I'm like, okay. And I got to quit the match and yeah, I'll get the warning. I'm, I've never been timed out though. Yeah. I mean, I know Gambit has one. Yep. I've has done that too. Thing. Where I had to back out and I was so, like, oh my God, there's a quitter penalty here. Okay. Yeah. Oh well. So yeah, it's a placeholder. It, it is active and it's just again designed to discourage, uh, mm-hmm. quitting. What a thought. Yeah, there's been a lot so. of flack over this, especially from a lot of, uh, content creators out there have said, well, what if I need to, you know, clean up my dog's throw up or something. And I'm like, well, the way I see this is you do get a warning, right? How many times yeah. do you need to quit in the course of a day? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's the thing is, I mean, and that I just, I, I don't know. I, apparently I'm guessing that more, I mean, quitting is more common amongst streamers. I mean, that's kind of the only thing I can imagine being the issue here. Um, I know I saw one video, I think it was Astacross, and he basically made it sound like quitting is sort of like a thing. Oh, a lot of people do it. They got to save that KD, man. And you know what's funny oh, is um, if you look up someone's stats on Charlemagne, it'll tell you how many games they've quit. It'll show incomplete or quit games. I'm curious. I'm going to pull that shit up for me. Pretty sure it's in there. Now, I now while you're looking that up, I know I can understand why some content creators say either, you know, maybe they get dropped or maybe they get kicked. You know, maybe they get a a weevil error or whatever. DDoS. Something. Sure. Whatever. You know. Smoke a joint. Whatever they got to do. But (laughs) the the thing is, is... um, we we are explicit folks. We are not for kids, so just know that. Um, we we, <laughs> I mean, the only thing I can think of is if if they do get kicked, you know, and maybe they had to go clean up their dog's throw up, and then then they get kicked, and then they're they're timed out automatically for thirty minutes. That's that's their content. That's their job. So a thirty minute suspension from playing is is kill. It's a killer for them, because how are they going to fill that time? They can't play any Crucible for thirty minutes. That's uh, I, 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 I can see from their point of view, that can be a little harsh. Maybe, maybe two, two warnings. I don't know. I don't know, man. I just think it's, they just need to is, know, is be it aware of what's going on. No, it's not. Okay. I know I've, I've, I've looked I it just, up in, I think it, maybe it was tracker network, but it'll tell you how many games they've quit yeah. or, or incomplete games. Maybe that's how they list it, but. Yeah, it, I mean, I'm sure it's in the Destiny Tracker stuff, but yeah, not in Charlemagne. So okay, good to know. Yeah, yeah. So people are just yep. saving that there KD. I mean, you know, KD. I mean, KD. People do look at it and they judge v- based on KD. It, it's unfortunate, oh, yeah. but that's just the way it's always been in shooters. Man, is how what's your KD? You know, you want to join us and play Crucible? What's your KD? You know, yeah. I they mean, did that in well, Call of Duty all I mean, the time. Exactly. It's just. I mean, it it sucks, sure, but it is what it is. Yeah, but don't quit a game know? if things. I mean, that's not the way. That's not the way life works. Yeah, you, you yeah. know, if things aren't going yeah. your way. You just can't quit. You got to stick it out. You got to figure out how to make it work. There, free the life tip. Free life tip, right there. Wow. There we go. Wow. That one's for free. Wow. It, it's almost like you're saying sack up and just fucking do it. <laughs> sack up, tit up, whatever it is. You know, just <laughs> yeah, something mm-hmm. like that move on with it so yeah um yeah life happens Wait, sucks. Get watch i'll get i'll get timed out this weekend watch <laughs> <laughs> i got dropped yeah, you'll get time out and you'll get timed out in a raid you're gonna be like what oh the- my god <laughs> jeez that's not even possible oops looks like you're quitting uh, too early there pal <laughs> yeah yeah the raid not going well hmm. okay so um Coincidentally enough, I was watching a Paul Tassi video because I got bored at work and um, they were, he was talking about like ways to improve the quitter penalty and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he said the damnedest thing. He goes, what they need to do is to change the map waiting. And I'm like, map waiting. Is that even a thing? 
Like, I mean, it kind of seems like it is, but at the same time, it was like, I don't know. Uh, all right. Hold like, on a sec. When you say map waiting, W E A W E I G H T, right? Like weighted. Right. What do they exactly. mean by that? So like how often it plays the map? Correct. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I want to make sure I understood that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what that means is basically that uh, you're going to see certain maps more often gotcha. and other maps less often. Gotcha. So, what they basically came to is that, hey, you know, if people are quitting, like, what can be done? And what they found is that there's one map in particular that a lot of people are quitting out of. Hmm. Now, they never said which one it is. But I have a feeling that we're going to see less of a certain map going forward, which is good for me because I hate the map. I'm going to say it's a, it's a newer map, by the way. So all of that being said, in the interest of transparency, we would like to share our current map selections for control. Disjunction and Cathedral of Dusk, basically the two most recent maps, have increased waiting. Then they have Normal Waiting, which is basically all, like, the rest of the maps. And then they have Reduced Waiting, so these maps you will see less, which are Bannerfall, Midtown, Exodus Blue, Wormhaven, and Burnout. I seem to get Wormhaven on awful lot, though, still. Really? Yeah. And then significantly reduced waiting on dead cliffs. So I still see dead cliffs too. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just have shitty RNG. Um, and then they removed anomaly, cauldron, and convergence from uh, control. Wow. Okay. Man, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, and, mm -hmm. I mean, just, my God, we don't have any new maps. It's just, why can't we just have them all? Can't we just put them all in control? No, because Anomaly would be a clusterfuck of a situation mm. with control. Okay. Yes. I played it, though. It could be done. It it can be, but dear Better God. Better have a shotgun. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So, yeah. So, there's that. Um, So, they said here. Uh, in the patch that went live on the 15th, they lowered the waiting of Disjunction and Cathedral of Dusk. Uh, so it'll be normal waiting for those. And pretty much every, so basically pretty much most of the maps except for Bannerfall, Midtown, Exodus Blue, Wormhaven, Burnout, Dead Cliffs, uh, will be normal waited. And the other ones that have been removed will okay. never see. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Any thoughts about that? No, I mean, I, I'm, I guess I'm okay with that. Um, I mean, that, that is 25 maps. That is a lot of maps. Let's not look at it here. Dead Cliffs, everyone knows you can control spawn That's like control. 25, is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 6, 7, 8, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5. I mean, if you count, I'm, I'm counting anomaly, anomaly, the cauldron, and convergence. Yeah, all the maps. No, they don't count. Yeah, they no, don't. No, count, no. So, so I'm 22. just saying. Yeah, so 22 maps. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. That's that's a lot, and they all now have regular waiting. You know, so I, that's... I really don't. I I think they should bring map voting in. I really do. They used to have that. Uh, I think they didn't. They used to have that Destiny one. Gosh, it's been so long, man. Um, I don't. I don't think they did. They never had map voting. They should have map voting because I mean they had it all the time in Call of Duty. But if well, they had it in Halo, which I right, mean, boggles right. my mind that they haven't yeah. like been able to throw that shit in here. I I honestly don't care on this part because it, whatever map it is is what it is, and I just got to put my head down and I know the map and play it. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Now, when I see disjunction sure. about twenty times, I might start getting tired of it, but I'm okay with this. Mm -hmm. I'd be more inclined to quit this junction than any other map. <laughs> I like this junction because it has nice uh, long sight lines, and it has the and it, it has might, the, it's a, it's a well rounded map. It might, but it's just you want the close quarter stuff. Go to the middle. You want the mid range stuff. Go yeah. to the right. You want the full lanes. Go to the left. I mean, it's an all in one map. It's actually pre pretty well designed. <clears throat> right. 
I don't know. It might be. It's just, I don't know. I, I just don't like it. There's something about it that just hits me wrong where I just hate my life whenever I'm in disjunction. All right. Well, I think what it is, is the warlocks flying up in the air, like <laughs> shooting down. It's just like dickhead. <laughs> just stop. Sorry. I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't wait till scrims. Oh, yeah, I can't wait either. I don't float in air, by the way. I blink in the air. Ah, okay. Yeah. I need to practice my blink. I'm telling you, Maybe I'll throw on blink. It's fun. Just go go to uh, Cosmodrome and practice it. You'll you'll get it down, man. It's it's a nice little perk to have. Anyway. I miss my Hunter and Titan. Mm. Okay, so... Uh, you know, wait a minute. I gotta FYI. give you, I gotta give you props for sticking it out. I thought you'd be giving up on Warlock by now. You're sticking it out, man. You're still playing it. I see you. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I am not stopping. I, I, it, it's gonna, you Kill know, you. hit me in the <laughs> junk every day that I log into this damn game. But I'm like, I'm, I am bound and determined to either one, have a newfound respect for Warlock. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to like it and try to figure it out. So. Well, whether you care or not, I, I, I gained a little respect in my eyes. So if I would have lost the bet, I would have stuck it out too. So just, just saying. No. Anyway. Well, hey, you know, well, now I'm all sappy. Maybe I'll, give, <laughs> maybe I'll take it easy on you. No, take a shot uh, of sake. You'll arguing be right. later. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't do that right now. I got you. Unfortunately. All right. So, uh, FYI, uh, Destiny is in Fall Guys. Uh, yeah. There's shit in there. If you play Fall Guys, go for it. If not, then don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Master Raid is going to be on the 20th. Just reset. This is when this comes out. Yep. Uh, normal mode challenges rewards double loot for the encounter. The challenge is active on. So that's good. We can do challenges for those. Uh, the challenges aren't anything too crazy. Mm-mm. I know what two of them are. Uh, totems is basically, you can't go on the same side twice. Oh, so you basically rotate. Exactly. I'm like, how hard is that? Okay. We did that. I think that was a challenge in destiny one too, or one of them. No, was it? they didn't have, no, not for totems. Okay. I'm trying to remember what the uh, challenge mode was or what what they call it. Uh, it legendary. It, I can't remember. Anyway, carry yeah, on. Yeah, it, it didn't, it didn't matter. I mean, we were one phasing war priest anyway and everything. So, no. okay. So master encounters reward stat focused armor, which is par for the course with that. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know master content for raids, uh, it's going to be focused either recovery, something like that, uh, resilience. It's going to change every week. So, uh, challenge reward, challenges reward adept weapons. So that means you can put adept mods on there or mods from, tr- uh, trials. Okay. All encounters are set at a power level of 1,600. Oof. Boom. But again, don't let that dissuade you from getting in here. I think I'm at 1,584, I think. Yeah, I think I'm right around there, too. Yeah. So, I mean, but don't let 1,600 scare you away. You know, you're, you might get your, you'll get one shot from, like, big enemies, mm-hmm. but you're going to take two hits or three hits from other stuff. You're still going to be okay. Are the, let me ask you, are the uh, Grandmaster and Nightfalls, are they kind of similar in power level? Um, I mean, th- looking back to last season, I don't know what you, because they haven't come out yet for the season. Yeah, they're not out yet. They come out in October. I'm just. I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Was it 1580 or 1585? 1585. 1585. That's, what the li- that's what the light cap was on them last yeah, week. Yeah, I think this season, season. Yeah, I think I think it'll probably be like 1590. Okay. For so not quite. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be just enough to be a pain in the ass. So yeah, it's um I mean, I don't know. I would I almost want to lean toward raids being easier. Master raids being easier. Well, that's what I was going to ask you earlier. GM. Is are you going to run master raids? Is it worth the 
is it worth the extra headache? Because, I mean, stat-focused armor? Eh. Well, I mean, you say it's a headache, but I don't really view it as a headache. I view this more as, you know, like, stat-focused armor is pretty cool. And then you can also slot in a, you know, recovery armor on your ghost shell. And That's true. you can up it even more. You know. Yeah. Not just that. Not just the one skill, but, like, the second skill. I mean, but you... So, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty much a way to get targeted loot. Yeah. Okay. You can only do three a week, so. I mean, as far as your your players. Yeah. As far as the rewards. So. So, yeah. Not too crazy. Uh, anything else? Well, it says you can get adept weapons. The, the problem I have with doing a master is I don't want adept weapons because I'm going to craft mine for enhanced. And you can't craft adept weapons. So, that's kind of demotivating for me. I honestly but, think uh, enhanced perks on weapons are better than adept in some cases. Ooh. It's a slight advantage with adept weapons. Oof. I don't know if it's that much, though. When I have, yeah, when I have I enhanced mean, firmly planning and I'm getting crazy stability, I don't know. I'm not worried about a stability, enhanced stability mod. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to test that, I guess, and see which is better. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the thing, though, is that, I mean, I mentioned this before when they were talking about, like, adept weapons and then uh crafted weapons. I mentioned it way back when, when I was just like, well, I mean, you know, which one's going to be better? Because, uh, to me, adept should be better. Because adept is tied to higher, harder content. Higher level content. Makes sense. Exactly. I mean... It just kind of sucks that you get an adept weapon and all you do is you get mods for it. Yeah, you can't craft you know? it. I mean, maybe they'll change that in the future, but well, I, not. I, I mean, know. not. I mean, they're not going to do crafting plus no. plus adept plus an adept. It makes That's, sense. It's higher level content. That, oof. Oh man! Uh, now I would be jumping hoops for that. I I think that's too overpowered. All right. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. I'll be honest, though. You know what I think that they need to do for um, craftable weapons? Hmm. If they're not going to give us the ability to basically like unlock the perks, let us choose four perks in the third and fourth columns. Four in each row? No. Two in each row. So okay. just like normal weapons. So you, you can, can have a so you can basically have a PvE and a PvP build, not have to redo a whole other weapon. Exactly. Yeah, it makes sense. I like that idea. I'm for that. Because I know. you can do that on like you know, like the seasonal weapons. You can get, you know, four perks on it. Mm -hmm. You can do that on like the adept weapons too. Right. Mm. Eh, you'll see. All right. Shit's broken. There it is. Nothing really interesting there. Uh, just the normal shit's broken stuff. Well, they mentioned uh, movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, well, they mentioned a patch on September 20th. I just got a tweet from uh, Bungie Help that they're going to, they're delaying that. So stay tuned as far as when the next hot fix will come out. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yep. So mention it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Movies. Art. Links are broken, so I can't see if they're awesome, but come on. It's Destiny. It's the community. It's got to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one more moment uh, for your time for a friend. So, Drew, in the uh, player support and community mod lead, uh, a.k.a. Dorado, uh, he was talking about Seraphim Crypto. Seraphim Crypto was another uh, community manager or community uh, lead that passed away a couple months ago. And uh, in honor of Seraphim Crypto, they are giving a uh, emblem. And it's, uh, let me see here. What is the name of it? Ah, here it is. Seraphim Scotlands. So uh, that code, for anybody who's interested is X 
as in X-ray, V as in victory, X is in X-ray, D is in Delta, K is in Kilo, J is in Joker, C is in Charlie, V is in Victor, and M as in Mike. So there you go. Get that emblem and uh, support Seraphim Crypto and the community. Okay. Aside from that, Hippie goes on to say, hey, play Fall Guys. We're on there. It's fun. Shit like that. Drink water. And I should go. Love that tag. One of my favorite tags. All right. Thanks, Hazel. Well, we'll be right back. Hey, this is Mr. Monkey, not Killer Monkey, not Monocle Monkey, Mr. Monkey. Get your bounties done. You're listening to Guardian Downcast. Uh, all right, Hazel, before we uh, move on to our community questions, uh, we had a question from Ronan Red Lion. And uh, he said it was more of a discussion. So I figured, okay, let's, let's have a discussion over this. And um, he said... His question to us was, what was, uh, what has your LFG experience been in Destiny 2? What would you say about LFG options to a newer player who isn't established with other acquaintance, acquaintances to play with? And I figured we would, you know, just see how, where we each side on this, uh, argument. So do you want me to go first? Or you want to go first? Uh, go for it, man. All right. I'm, um, I'm not a fan of LFG. I've had very bad experiences in Destiny 1 with LFG, and I know they've, I know the LFG experience has probably improved a little bit over time, but my advice would be to join a community. And if it's not ours, there's a lot of communities out there. Join uh, some clans, look for some clans that fit your style, you know, jump into some discords where you get along with the people. And I mean, that's, that's what we've been doing. A lot of people don't need to go to LFGs because we have, bots that put games together for everyone here. And I mean, we have hundreds of players now that can jump into these games. So there's a big pool of players. I mean, a lot of them are active and it just doesn't make sense to go do an LFG anymore. So I'm, my experiences is, is I haven't done any in destiny two. I did a lot into in destiny one. And I remember trying to do an LFG playing trials one time. And they said, if your ELO isn't this, don't even bother. I'm like, man, what kind of, what kind of crap is that? You know, you want it, you want someone to play with. You're out there reaching out to the public. Hey, we want some, someone to game with us, but they got to be a certain level or everyone knows about the must have Gallahorn experiences. Or, uh, I'd have people, I'd jump in at the LFG and they go, okay, show me the emblem. I'm like, what, what? Show me the emblem that you've done a legendary, a legend, uh, raid. I'll go, what? No emblem. You get booted. I'm like, this is, this is bullshit. So I have not had good experiences with LFGs, but I tell you what I have done is I've joined communities. I've joined clans. And I mean, I've been in some past clans before I was even in dad's tales. And before we even started what we're doing now, where we would get our raids done every Tuesday morning, boom, 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 all done. If uh, <clears throat> we wanted to play crucible on the weekends, we had friends to play with and it, it just was a very positive experience. So that's that's kind of my answer to that question around the red line. What about you, Hazel? What say you? Okay. I've been biting my tongue. It's like I, I have no tongue now. I know. Um, so, all right. There, there's a couple of different angles I want to go into this. So, the first one is that my personal experience is the exact opposite of Gators. So, Pretty much, I mean, I, I even went into Reddit, uh, when I was in D1. And I mean, so for anybody who doesn't know, Reddit, uh, their fire teams area is basically, I mean, I would say it's probably like the creme de la creme. It's pretty much the elites will go there, uh, because, and they'll say, you know, must have Gallahorn, must be, you know, 15,000 power level, uh, whatever it was at the time. And must have emblem, all of that. But the thing is, though, is that they stated the criteria. 
And if I didn't meet that criteria, guess what? I kept looking. Yeah. Or I posted my own game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's the thing with LFG is that if you see the dreaded four letters, KWTD, for anybody who doesn't know, that means know what to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what to do in a raid from basically opening encounter through the end of it, don't do it. You're only setting yourself up for failure. Or some abuse. No, no. Okay, but that's rightly that so, in my opinion. Sorry. See, see, you're interrupting. I'm see, sorry. I did not oh, interrupt oh, oh, you're with right. you. And I, you're right. Go ahead. I thought about it. Continue. So what I'm saying is you have to, you have to be a realist when it comes to things. You have to know your own level and where you stand. If you don't meet the criteria... Don't bitch about it. Just move on with your life and post your own game or, you know, or just sit and wait and watch. I mean, cause see, I used to do both. I used to go like, oh man, like right now there's a master nightfall 1590 plus. I'm not 1590 plus. So you know what? I'm not going to sign up for that. So you have to be a realist. Like with Gator, when he was complaining about, you know, like an EL, like an ELO of whatever. And he's like, come on, man, I just want to play. Then what I would say for you would be to go ahead and set up your own match. So that way people can play with you and they don't have to worry about that ELO requirement that that other group had. Because when people say, know what to do. In my experience, it's either one of two things. Either one, they're looking for somebody who knows what to do because they've been playing the game for three hours and they just want to finish the raid. Mm -hmm. Or it's somebody who's a parent or, you know, has limited time and they just want to get in, knock the shit out and move on with their life. So that's, that's my tips for LFG. And I'll be honest again, my anecdotal experience is that I've been doing GMs through LFG with no mic, no comms, getting through it just fine. Um, I mean, of course, I mean, there are some situations where we don't finish it. You know, it happens, you know, it's just something that does. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Um, Hawks and myself go Hawks. We did an LFG uh, GM where we just needed a third and it was for, um, it's the one on Europa. That's the big pain in the ass one, the glass way. Mm. And it definitely not an easy one, but it was fun to do that though. I mean, we, we didn't even, I mean, Hawks and I had comms. The other guy didn't, but I mean, it was just, it was fun, you know? Those are my thoughts. How I'm just curious. How do you um, how do you communicate if you don't have a mic in a raid? How do you know who's assigned <laughs> to what? Is it chaos mode? Well, no. I mean, raid is something else. Raid, you definitely need a mic for. But but now there are no? some. Yeah, GMs. No, not okay. at all. It's a strike. We all know the strike. It's just okay. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Is that I mean, like, so okay. In preparation, because we, we knew this was going to be our question that we were going to talk about. Mm-hmm. So I did some prep work. And I was looking at LFG just to see what it had. And it was basically things like 1590 plus Master Templar Challenge finish with challenges. Mm. Uh, seven wins card. Uh, triumph console chill so for the nightfalls. They're like, bring mods. So if you don't know what you're doing, watch a video because I appreciate what Gator said. And you are 100% correct. Join a, a community where you can go ahead and play and raid and PVP with people that you know, and things like that, or even people that you don't know. But to me, the hard part for that, is it's hard to join a community 
I mean, it's daunting. I mean, you're an introvert. It's, I mean, isn't it scary to join a community for the first time? And then you don't know about saying hi to somebody. And it's just, it's just awkward. That initial stuff is awkward. Yeah. When I, uh, when I joined dad's tales, I was just breaking up from a clan. In fact, I was just looking for a fresh start and, um, yeah, I didn't know anybody in there. Uh, and if it wasn't for people like drafty who reached out and said, Hey, or uh, tried to high five me in the tower because we're both in Florida. Uh, that kind of opened the door for me to get involved in the community, and that's why when anybody who joins our Discord, I tell our mods to tag me because I want to make sure I personally welcome them into the Discord because I want to make sh- I want to make people feel like I did when some of the choice people in the Dad's Tales podcast uh, Discord reached out to me because I, I'm I'm a I'm pretty much a loner when it comes to playing Destiny, and I know we have people in our our uh, Guardian Town cast our our first clan who I'll never see them because I know just I've known them for years they play solo but they want to be part of a clan they want to be something bigger be be a part of something bigger and help contribute to the clan XP and etc. But it, I think. Yes, it's to answer your question, it's very daunting. And uh for a lot of people, we've had a lot of folks coming into our Discord here lately that have said, Listen, I I haven't played Destiny since, you know, Destiny One. And uh I'm I looked at the new Lifefall trailer and I thought that looked really fun, so I'm trying to get back into it. And yeah. we had so many people reach out and say, Hey man, we'll get you covered. Whatever you want to work on, we'll we'll try to point you in the right direction. Exactly. But you won't ever I mean, get that from an LFG. LFG is so much colder well, and it's all business. LF, LFG is basically like you said. Yeah. It's, it is all business. Yeah. It's basically people, people with like minded mindset. Now I will say though, the exception to all of this is the 100.io. Yes. Because they kind of give you like a little questionnaire and they say, Hey, you know, you fit with this group. Right. And then they put you in a group of people with the similar mindset. So are you looking for having fun, your age range, or your dad, things like that? Yeah. I, d- I don't know how far in t- depth it goes nowadays. I think they have parent or something like that. Some, some kind of categorization like that it has kids or something. I don't know, but yeah. yeah, but I mean, that's how Admiral Nips, I mean, joined his clan. That's true. So, I mean, I would say that, I mean, if you're just starting out in this game and you do want to join uh, LFG, do it because you're always going to get asshats. You always are, but it's not all that this community is built on. Uh, in my experience, if you're if you just follow the tips that I gave you before about just read the description. If you know what it means, then go with it. If you don't know what it means, then don't join it. If you have a doubt, don't join. Then it. That's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And you're going to have a much better experience. Yeah. full. Dis- mean, and then uh, real quick, I was just going to say, thought. don't be afraid. Also, if you do do an LFG on either the destiny forums or 100.io, don't be afraid to put in there. Chill run. I'm learning. I don't know what I'm doing. And you know what? You're probably going to get people that are going to, I mean, depending on if you say like five minutes from now, I mean, you may not get as many hits, but if you do that and it's early enough, Plan ahead. you're going to get like people in there. You're going to want to Sherpa you and people that are going to want to carry and things like that. So the, the amount of asshats that are in the community is not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. And I speak as being an asset. So you called me an asset last week. Am I an asset? I think I did. Okay. I'm both eh, assets. No, not not okay. not when it comes to this. And I'm not really an asset well, either. But yeah, I get you. Yeah. Well, I mean that that just goes to show I had such a bad experience in LFG and Destiny One that I never look back. I I would rather join a community and 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 take my chances. And and just for the record, uh, when I was looking for a, a trials and they were at, they were looking for Elo. I did put my own post in and eventually it took a while, but eventually two other people did join me and, uh, no, we didn't go flawless, but we learned, we all learned together. One guy came in and I remember him saying, uh, 
all right, so how much have you played? I'm like, well, I, I mean, I know how to play Crucible, but I haven't really played a lot of Trials. And he's like, all right, man, we'll, we'll see if we can get you to three wins. How about that? And he was really cool about it. And that, that was a good experience. But it doesn't exactly. outweigh all those bad experiences where – and I know the feeling. I know the feeling, guys. You're in a raid. You don't know anybody in the raid, and you don't know what you're doing. And you just kind of go hide in the corner and don't say anything. I know. I know. I see you. I see you. When you're in a group and I don't hear any, hear anybody talking on the mic, I know what you're going through. Don't, don't be afraid to speak up. Say, listen, uh, hey guys, I know you guys are talking about which, which way you're going to do this encounter. Um, I'll just be honest here. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Is that cool? If it's not, I'll leave, but you know, I just want to let you know, I don't know what I'm doing here because guess what? The way raids are designed today, they're going to know really quick if you don't know what you're doing. So just be honest, yeah. be honest. Say, Hey guys, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I didn't, I read the post. It didn't say that I needed prior experience or anything. I'm just letting you know, I haven't done this before. And if that's cool, fine. I'll stay. If not, you guys can find another player. It's really tough to do that by the way, because you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be looked down on and you don't want to be mm-hmm. kicked. There's nothing worse than getting kicked, man. That's just the ultimate. It's just, it's a gut punch, man. <sighs> it, for me, it is. <sighs> it's a different for everybody. I get it. It's not personal, but I don't know. I take it that if, way. If I get if I get kicked, I view that as fuck those guys. Fuck those guys. I don't really want to play with them anyway. <sighs> yeah, I get that. But there's been I so mean, many bad experiences that but, I've just been shy I mean, to. But it. again, it's it's funny that you say that you have all these bad experiences because I've, I mean, even my bad experiences, quote unquote, were still fun in mm. some degree. Some degree because, like I said, you know, the one time that uh, we were doing. Um, the one GM mm-hmm. and the, like we got to whatever it was. I think it was the boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was proving grounds. And this guy's like, you know, Rick Kakis said this was going to be the easiest season to get <laughs> Remember that fucking Rick Kakis. <laughs> and I'm like, like, dude, I mean, just because it's easy or the, one of the easier seasons to get a GM done, it doesn't mean that it's like, you know, you're just going to steamroll everything. You still have to have a challenge. You still yeah. got to watch your life and stuff. Can't run your run head first into a boss. I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you're still going to get punished yeah, for being covered. stupid. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, here, let's try it this way. And, you know, granted, we didn't do it and they ended up, we ended up like quitting and stuff. But then I did another one and we made it through just fine. It was just. All right. You convince me. I need to try an LFG. I'll try an LFG just for testing. I'll try doing it one day. We'll see mm-hmm. how I'll, I'll, I'll report back. Okay. Yeah. We'll see and it again, it's just be smart about it. You know, if, unless you know what to do, don't join and know what to do. One. Oh, I know. It's- Maybe people will say, Oh my God, it's Gator. He joined our LFG group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. I saw your, I saw you on YouTube, dude. Yeah. You suck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get out of here, here man. We like, yeah, here's hoping you talk faster in a raid than you do on your YouTube videos. <laughs> All right, Just now. Kidding. All right. Zing. Yeah. But anyway, so, I, I kid, guys. I'm, please. I'm, I'm being, I'm being, I'm joking around here. Anyway, uh, anything else, Hazel, wanted to add to this? I mean, I, I did it. I went the other option. I went, I went, I joined a community and we really encourage you guys to join our community. I mean, of course we do. Of yeah, course I mean, we do. We we are we've got so many people that want to help other people. Not just our Discord. God. We have other Discords and our 100.0 bot. This sounds like an ad almost. Um we're tied together in in the Owl Sector Alliance. So we have several podcasts that all play together and we share Discords and we all help each other out. So we were just having a conversation about raids and how to make it easier for people to post raids and stuff today and we're working on maybe coming up with something to improve that as well. We'll see. Well, I was going to say, I'm like, you know, just a peek behind the curtain is Mm -hmm. that we, not just us, but everybody in the Owl Sector Alliance. So it's two Titans and a Hunter. It's, you know, the Guardian Hub, Potato Thumbs. Potato Thumbs. thumbs. Um, Yeah. Us. I mean, (laughs) we want a big thriving community. And we were talking about it today about, you know, like some people, I mean, had a bad experience in the, in King's fall because they didn't know how much time it would take. Mm. 
And we're like, okay, well, what can we do about that? And we're trying to, you know, get to the root cause of, you know, what can we do? How can we make rating better and more fun for people and more accessible? So, I mean, we're thinking about this stuff, you know, feel free to throw your comments out, you know, in the discord, let us know like, Hey, you know, uh, this could help or this could not help. Or, you know, here's a bad idea. You know, even bad ideas are, we can learn something from. Mm-hmm. I even, so I even just, yeah. Yeah. I was just say that's just a peek behind the curtain. Yeah. I even thought about possibly doing a video. Let us know. You think a video would help having a pinned video or something in the, uh, in the frequently asked questions or, uh, or, um, you know, how to, how to make a post on our owl sector alliance 100.io. Some people, it's new to them. I mean, hell, what, who were we talking to? Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> Native Raider last week. His son had to come in and tell him how to use Discord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, come on. We know we, it, you know, have getting plugged into a new system or a new technology or a new community. It, it, it's a, it's a little daunting. So we're trying to make it mm-hmm. easier where people can, you know, jump out there and say, listen, I'm new. Can anybody help me run a raid? I want to do it this Friday at, uh, I don't know, 10 o'clock. How about it? Yep. And you'll be surprised. A lot of people will help you out. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Yep. Or you can be an asset and go to LFG. Hey, 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 hey. (laughs) Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Kind of. Uh Oh, man. All right. All right. Fine. All right. Not an asshat. Exactly. Exactly. You run the risk of running into more asshats doing LFG. Yes, but not everybody in LFG is an asshat. Okay. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll go with that. All All right. right, Good. All right. So, um, well, one other, um, hot topic from the week. Okay. Oh, I know. Uh, this is a direct question from soccer, the iron Lord. Oh, yes. I'm jealous that he has that title. By the way, I gave him that name. By the way, claiming it. You're welcome, soccer. I'm pretty pretty sure he got that title by, you know, playing. Oh no, I just Banner. no, I named him in the Discord. I gave him that nickname. Uh, look at you. I know. It's having fun. Anyway, a uh, question for the show: What's your take on the divinity drama oh, slash discussion happening here it is. lately? Here so. It is. For anybody who doesn't know, Saltagreppo, basically the top point zero 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 one percent of the Destiny community, aka part of the three-time yep. world's first raid team, said that Divinity is too good and it needs a nerf. That's what he Boom. said. Boom. And he got roasted for it. Yeah, he got roasted for it. But some people did come to his defense and say things like, you know, hey, you're right, and that kind of thing. So, Gator, the floor is yours. Yeah, I, I must... You want me to go first? No, no, it's fine. I'll go. Uh, I, I must admit, I was judgmental when someone told me about this. I immediately jumped in and said, what an elitist. But then I realized that Salter Greppo didn't start this post. He was just react. He was responding to someone who threw that question out there. And uh, he was just giving his opinion. So, you know, hey... I mean, we can't, when we can't give our opinion about anything anymore. What are we doing? Why have Twitter? If no one wants to give their, you know, if, it, if we're all just going to fall in line and just say what, what the establishment or what the community wants us to say, then why are we even participating in Twitter? But, uh, anyway, True. as far as the divinity, <sighs> divinity argument, I mean, I've used it a few times. Uh, I will say this. It's not easy to get. It's one of the hardest. Uh, difficulty, uh, exotics out there because you have to run through, uh, another raid and flawlessly, by the way, you can't come back to it. You have to do it in one completion, which is a pain in the ass. But, um, yeah, you got to through the guard. You got to go through these extra puzzles and stuff through the garden of salvation raid. And thanks to Kingsley for helping me get mine because I didn't have, have one either, but, and on occasion I've used it to help, uh, do DPS damage because the debuff is very strong on it. But I'm like, listen, this is like any other weapon in the game. I mean, if Dun Bungie put it in the game, then we should be able to use it. And if it, if the DPS is too much or the debuff is too strong, then it's it's up to Bungie to adjust for that. They have all the data. They know what damage we're doing. Hell, I got an email 
about how much damage I did to my first King's Fall raid to all the bosses. I mean, they know all the numbers. So I'm fine with it. I don't think it needs to be touched, but if, 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 if it's that crazy strong, then, then Bungie will make adjustments to it, but I don't think we need to force Bungie to do it. I mean, we've been using this weapon for a long time now for, for DPS and boss, uh, debuff. So. I'm like, leave it alone. I think they, this is way overblown and, uh, it's just another tool in our arsenal and only one player needs to use it. So there you go. That's my take. What about you? Okay. Uh, significantly less long winded than you were. Sorry. Um, I think it does need a nerf. Hmm. Yeah. Rip the bandaid off right away. Wow. Yeah. You know why? Why? So fun fact. Before this show, uh, Rodimus Prime, Follow the Water, Grackle, Ronin, and Scoot, they were all talking. And I was just, you know, I just joined in just to see what they were up to. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, so they're getting ready for a raid. They're going to do King's Fall. And then Grackle asked, hey, who's bringing Div? Yeah. That's a problem. Well, it's a tool. I mean, it's a problem, man. It's like, it's, mu- it's must have Gallahorn 2.0. Hmm. I've done a lot of raids without Div. It, it, it's not, it's not, it, it, it's not absolutely needed to complete the raid, but it, it can make things easier. Have, especially have if you you're done trying- a King's Fall? Yeah. Without Div? Yeah, I have. On Warpriest and Oryx? I'm trying to think. I've run four of them. No, five of them. I'm just going to say no. You haven't. I'm trying. Somebody to Somebody always using brings it. Div. We we were doing previous bosses without it, but maybe maybe the final boss, maybe the war, uh, more priest. I'm trying to think. Sister, the sisters. You need. I mean, if, if anybody tells, do we me need it? Done- do we need it for sisters? If we do, then that's part of the game design, and we need to have Div. No, we don't need to touch it. You, but you you don't need it though. I mean, that's the thing, though. It just makes life easier for everybody, though. And that's the thing that, to me, like, I mean, what do we call it whenever somebody, we're like, okay, well, who's bringing Div? What do we call that person? Who's bringing Gallahorn? No. We call that person who's running Div the Div bitch. Yeah, because their DPS numbers aren't going to be as high. Exactly. They're, it's a supporting role, though. I mean, I, I like that part. That Destiny's created no, a supporting role. That's that's useless. I mean, how fun is that to sit there and just shoot something that is going to put a big ass bubble on something that makes it so you don't have to aim as well? Hey, I don't like using it. I want my numbers to be up. But if I have to, and so, no one else is doing it, then I'll do. I'll bring it. But but see, that's the thing though is we shouldn't have to bring Div. <sighs> it should. There. I mean, honestly, I mean, to me, I mean. It's, it's on the sort of like, like Bungie painted themselves into a corner with it because now it's sort of like they have to design encounters around it because somebody is going to bring it because if they put in like half the health on a boss, Mm -hmm. people are going to bring div and they're going to burn it down really quick. So they have to give these bosses like insane health gates. So that way we can't just burn through a boss. All right. Counterpoint. If you're saying div is a problem when people are asking who's bringing div, how is that any different than someone saying who's doing bubble? I mean, you're getting a buff in there as well to reload speed. You know what I'm saying? So how is that any different? It's a tool in our arsenal. A bu- uh, uh, someone who has a well, who's bringing well, who's bringing bubble, who's bringing well. These are tools. These are just supportive tools that aren't going to relate to direct DPS on the boss. So your numbers will be lower. Than someone who's throwing a Nova bomb or a, or a Kamehameha or, or hammers or whatever offensive supers are out there. How's it any different? It's just a tool. But the difference in my mind is that your super. So depending on how you're using it, you can't use it 
effectively. Like, I mean, what's a Titan going to do on Oryx? Melting point? Use hammers. Hammers, melting but point? Oryx's ass is, like, way out there. You're going to die if you use melting point on Oryx. I don't know, man. Those hammers will reach them. I think they do. I've seen people use them. Yeah, but how effective is that? I don't know. I can't answer that question because I don't run Titan. That's my thing. Is that, I mean, it, to me, it all comes down to how effective is it? Now, in my mind, a super using a bubble is different than div because one div is basically it's continuous. It's a weapon. You can run out of ammo, which means that you have not likely. Come on, man. Not likely, but you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why did I even say that? (laughs) Open the door for you. Well, exactly. But that's the thing, though, is that it's based to me. It's you. It's must have Gallowhorn. If you don't have div, like, I mean, I've seen it in LFG. We were just talking about that. Uh, must bring div. Must and be the like, div bitch. Exactly. It's like, come on. Like, I mean, maybe, I don't know if it's possible, but maybe like Bungie, like, I don't want to say disables it, but maybe if people go into a raid without div, that they give the boss like different health gates. What if they just locked uh, a certain clip amount so you only have so much of it? What can you do that? But Couldn't that okay, that'd be so a type of a nerf. That's, but if the, but the thing is though is that if they do that, I mean, can I just tell you? I was div bitch for I want to say it was when I was playing with Wrong Side of Heaven, and. I was like, I was running special finisher. Mm-hmm. So you can get, so and there was a guy and he, exactly. I was getting two bricks virtually every finish. Hmm. I had so much div on the ground or so much ammo, special ammo on the ground. We got pulled into the, uh, the right. shade mm-hmm. and I was using div on him when he was coming in. Hmm. People were losing their damn minds that I was wasting my ammo. And I was like, dude, Trust me, I got this. You don't need to worry about me. All right? Just kick his ass, mm-hmm. and I'll be ready for the boss. Keep in mind, just mentioning this, that finisher costs you super energy. So there's a pay, there's a trade-off for having that ammo. It's something it cost it, you. It was like a tenth of my, yes, of my special. Yes, but it did cost you something. It did cost you super. It does. It does, but which is more beneficial? Oh, I'll agree. I'll agree. Or div. No, the div is more important. Hands down. The extra ammo is important. And that's the thing. That's it. Your choice of words is perfect for me. You said that div is more important. (sighs) Ass hat. Oh, I mean, I mean, uh, (laughs) (laughs) so. I mean, the other thing that I would say would be maybe they give us other options instead of div. Okay. You know, give us another type of debuff that we can do instead of div. So that way they can maybe phase out div a little bit. So that way we can go ahead and do like everybody can contribute to the DPS, not just five people out of six. Now, isn't there some debuff uh, fragments in some of our void solar and arc 3.0s? Aren't there debuffs or am I missing something here? There are. I mean, yeah, there are like but void grenades, weakened targets, but and they're just like they're that. limited time, I guess. Right. And also the other thing too is that it's not as powerful. Come on, you get oh. div. Yeah, it's the most. For, I mean, if you figure, I mean, you, I mean, if you're running like scavenger yeah. and finders mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and then you put on plus you're creating a giant like, crit. Be, well, exactly. And I'll be honest, whenever I use div, I have a chest piece that has double trace rifle reserves mm-hmm. that I throw on, mm-hmm. get the flag, and then I trade change off of it. Okay. So that way I'm getting like, it's like crazy amounts of ammo. And that mixed with, you know, special finisher, it's like I don't have any issues at all when it comes to div. Okay. I, I, I guess it just doesn't. It's not so much of a big deal for me, but okay. I mean, that's why we have discussions, right? Because we don't always see it eye to eye on stuff. Yeah. 
And I'm sure that I'm going to get roasted. But well, I'm sure a lot of new people just learned to have a double, a double uh, uh, <laughs> uh, scavenger yeah. mods on their on their chest piece. So. <laughs> I double mean, reserves, yeah. Double reserves. We're helping we're helping people on both sides of the equation here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, hey, that's multifaceted. I honestly so. do not think a bungee is gonna touch to div. I don't think they're gonna touch it. This is gonna settle down, no one's gonna complain anymore. It's just a little ripple in the uh Twittersphere, and we'll move on with life. I'd like to see maybe a smaller div bubble. There's compromises, but it really, it, it just doesn't mean I much mean, to me. I mean, but I, I mean, there's I, other things to worry I guess about. To a, I guess to a degree, I hope they don't nerf it because the amount of hate that Salt Agrippa would get would be unreal. Oh, that's true. Didn't think of that. So I, I, I guess I hope they don't do it, but I don't know. I just get sick of having one person have to be the div bitch where you know that their numbers are going to be shitty. Yeah. Everybody should contribute, and to me, I don't think being div bitch is contributing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my throat's itching. <coughs> <coughs> I got inhaled a piece of dust or something. Ah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, the 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 heat from the spicy tape. Oh my god! Yes, so. that must have been it. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else, Hazel? Any many other points on that? Um, no, I think that's it. Man, we got some great speak pipes tonight for some new from some new folks, so I can't wait to hear these. Uh hang in there everyone. Peace. We'll be right back. Hey Guardians. Would you like to send a question for the show to us? There are four easy ways to do it. First, join our Discord server. There is a join link in our show notes. We have some great gamers in there, and you can just lurk or hang out and jump right in and talk to us, whatever you'd like to do. There is also a channel labeled Podcast Questions, where you can type in your question for the show. You can also email us at guardiandowncast at gmail.com. Or we also occasionally tweet about our upcoming show and guest, and you can respond there with your question. At Guardian underscore D underscore cast is our Twitter handle. Finally, you can send us a voicemail with your questions at speakpipe.com slash Guardian Downcast, all one word, and we'll play it live on the show. Thanks to all of you out there who do listen to our show. And Toddles. And later, Guardian. Hey, man. That's my line. What? Yeah. Says who? That, it's in Prove the script. It. It's my line. All right, boys and girls, it's that time of our show. This is where we get our questions from our community. And I'm going to start out with a speak pipe, and this is from Crumbtown3000. Hey, guys. Love the podcast. I have an hour commute to work most days and love hearing your guys' thoughts on the game. I'd like to hear more about your exotic armor builds, though. Specifically, what are your favorite PvP and PvE armor pieces? Um Gator, I don't know if you can call yourself a void lock and not be running 10 discipline what? with controverse hold. That's my hot take. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Crumbtown3000. Appreciate you sending that I in. I like that guy. I uh, like that guy. All right. I'll answer his question. He has a point. No, he, he does. He has I'm a, a point. And I'm going to answer that question. But what do you think? We'll go to you first. Um, what are your well, exotic, I mean, exotic builds for PvE and PvP? I mean, so are you having to, you're having to play on Warlock, right? Yeah. Well, hold on. Let me get my popcorn. So, so here's the fun thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that with this unkillable Titan or uh, unkillable Titan, uh, unkillable Warlock build, mm -hmm. 
as it stands right now, I don't have any Neither. exotic pieces on. Mm, figured that. So, I started, like, tinkering with it. Not during the course of this show. Certainly not. I tinkered around with transverse of steps. So basically I can run and sprinting reloads my current weapon. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm figuring, you know, I'm running around, I'm with my callus mini tool and it's, you know, reloading my weapon there. Um, but I don't know. It, it was fun. Sure. But I was still burning through ammo quicker than, than anything. So I was like, okay, well, what else can I run? So with it, I don't really like well. So I switched to, uh, what is it? Dawnblade? Yeah. Daybreak. And then I wanted to have some fun. So I put on Claws of the Ahamkara. Mm. Okay. Double, uh, double melees. Double melee. Yep. And, um, I've got a pretty decent roll on them. So. I basically will spec into melee or uh, strength, and then I'm running around smacking people. Well, that coupled with you know one two punch. So that way, what one two punch is is for the uh, arc bond or class item, and you use a finisher, you get your melee back. So you figure that coupled with double melee and outreach by the way. So that way, mm -hmm. whenever I put, put down my rift, <clears throat> I yeah. end up getting more melee mm -hmm. and it's basically just like a neat little thing where I'm just running around smacking the shit out of everything. Just like here, you know, you get a celestial fire, you get a celestial fire, you get a finish because if I throw it into like a big group, they're going to still be alive. <clears throat> And then I can go ahead and, you know, finish off one or two of them. And then I'm back smacking people. Yeah. There's some, there's some very powerful loops you can build in, uh, with warlocks. That's one reason I love mm -hmm. them. Their utility is so good. <clears throat> um, yep. okay. And then uh, PVP. Yep. What's using? Osmianti gloves. Oh. Yep. And not just for the turrets either. But just for cold snap. Oh, the cold snap grenade. So I can just keep throwing those and keep basically freezing people <laughs> briefly and pissing them off. And You're an annoying person to play with on PvP. <laughs> I am. I, I fully agree with that. <laughs> oh I, I, I feel dirty. I, hey, it's I, in the game. One moment. It's in the game. Yeah. There was one moment where I, I froze this guy like three times and I was like, I am a piece of shit. <laughs> Here, just kill me. I'll give you this one. Man. Come on, just go ahead. I'm holding my gun up. You don't. I won't shoot you. Come on, just kill me. I already killed you five though, times. He got so pissed off at me. I, well, no, I froze him like three times in a row. Oh, <laughs> he couldn't get out of there. <laughs> exactly. Between cold snap and grenades and like, turrets. <laughs> that's why I was like, I am such a piece of shit. <laughs> but he got so mad at me that he just like kept focusing on me, and he was a much better player than I was. So. He got like four kills on me in a mm -hmm. row, and I'm like, yeah, I deserve that. Yeah. All right. What about you? That's a dirty setup, man. No, I got to go look at that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, you, no, Crumb Town. You're not going to be able to pull my void lock. Let me break this down for you. Uh, I'll just go over PvP first because that's very simple. I'm not really, I don't really build my, uh, crucible builds on regeneration of, uh, of, of grenades and melees and all that, because I get them back pretty quick. Um, on my, 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 what I call my iron banner void build, uh, astrocyte verse. That's all about that, man. I can blink more often, higher and farther. And now they buff the blink for, for hunters and warlocks. I can blink even higher and faster. Uh, so I, my, my build, anytime I build my void lock in the PVP, it's about survivability and maneuverability. Uh, just on this setup alone, I have, uh, almost a tier 10, um, intellect, which I know I don't need. I know I don't need it. But when I was playing Iron Banner and getting those, bur those, uh, buffs to, uh, super energy and stuff, when I was getting, uh, damn, I keep never at that word. Was it, was it getting lit or, uh, I don't know, ignited? 
whatever that damn word is. I never can remember it. Uh, uh, primed, primed. There we go. Hey, I, I, got, yeah. I remember something. Um, whenever I get primed, man, I, I was throwing four Nova bombs a game almost. Some games I did, some games it was three, but I'm running a tier eight maneuver, uh, mobility. I'm running a tier nine, uh, resistance. So I'm, I'm hardly getting flinched, especially if I want to snipe. And, uh, my recovery is even tier six. Now, granted, I only have a, th- a tier three discipline build, but it, my, it's all about gun game. It's all about maneuverability, getting around the map. I'm running, um, I'm running powerful friends. I'm running, uh, high energy fire. It's all about getting more damage with your, in, with your guns. And like I said, getting that 20 boost to, uh, mobility. So that's my setup for PVE. It's very simple. Now, before you pull my void lock card, I'm going to break my three, my void 3.0 PVE build down for you here because, uh, you may think that you need tier 10 discipline when it comes to getting your grenades back. No, you don't need that stuff. I, I'm, I mean, to start, I'm running bolstering detonation, which grants class ability whenever I use, whenever I cause damage with my grenades. So I'm getting my, I'm getting my energy back there for abilities. I'm running distribution, which reduces all ability cooldowns when I'm using a class ability near targets to boot. I'm using perpetuation, which further reduces class ability cooldowns when using my class ability. I'm using an elemental ordinance. Defeating a combatant with a grenade spawns an additional well that matches the subclass energy type. I'm using font of might, which gives me resistance when I pick that well up. Font of wisdom. I'm getting more elemental wells, uh, that increase my intellect and recharge rate of my super. I've got seeking wells, which means I don't have to run to them. They're coming to me. And then finally I have well of tenacity. Picking up a void elemental well reduces the damage you take from combatants. Um, when you're using Devour, I, don't, I think I only have to kill two and a half enemies, two and a half dregs, and I've got my grenade back. So I don't really need a 100 discipline because de- using Devour, I can regenerate all that stuff so quickly. And you add those extra mods that I just talked about right there, it's it's almost instant. So there's no there's no reason for me to try to build into a discipline build or a discipline build because I've already got everything in my class for PVE set up around it. And, and of course with devour, you're not only getting your grenades and energies for every, all your abilities back really quickly, but I'm getting my health back instantly. Anytime I kill something. So it's a win win for me. So hopefully that answers your, your question there. Crumb town. Uh, okay. Hazel. Yep. Take, take his, uh, his void lock card. Take no, that. you can't take it. Um, no. Hey, uh, fun fact though. You said font of might gives you increased. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it gives more damage. I meant to say that yeah, I, I caught it, myself yeah, it's weapon damage. Thank you for yeah. that. Cause I, yeah, it, yeah. See, I'm, I'm inflicting more damage and I'm taking less damage at the same time. Uh, I talked about this in my, uh, got mods video because peop- it was kind of a bonus thing. I put at the end of the video is what mods I was using for certain things. And that, that's one thing I mentioned. All right. Mm. Uh, let's start with the discord. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So here's a, uh, a follow up kind of along the same lines here. A uh, question for the show from NS Ripsaw 162. Okay. Was thinking about the loadout recommendations that were reviewed in the last episode. Got me thinking that we have all seen content creators post reviews of what does the most DPS. Mm-hmm. What I would like to see is something that shows what is acceptable, quote unquote, for PVE in-game loadouts. For example, if someone is new and doesn't have all the exotics yet, what is a solid middle ground? Is mm. Celestial Nighthawk really an option? I know it's outclassed by other stuff, <clears throat> but does that mean it's a hindrance to a team? Can I use Blade Barrage if I don't have Star Eater scales on? Stuff like that. Sorry for only using hunter examples, but that's all I really play. But yeah. I think it gets the point across for any subclass. He's looking for a floor. Mm-hmm. He's looking for a minimum viability going into a fire team to be able to contribute. I get that. Because a lot of people don't have yeah. these mods, you know? They have to wait for Ida or uh, Ada 1 to uh, decide to put them up. So uh, I'm, I, I'll defer to you Ooh. because you're the hunter here. I'm not, I'm not, I know of hunter. I play hunter, but I'm not really <laughs> super deep into these builds. Well, I mean, okay, first of all, even without Star Eater Scales, Blade Barrage is still top tier. That's what I use, by the way. Yeah. So, I mean, rest assured that you're good there. 
Um, like a uh, this one YouTube video that I saw recently. Um, if you go to Zer, especially right now, mm-hmm. he has a pretty decent shards of Galanor uh, roll for Blade Barrage, actually, where basically, depending on the number of hits you get, you actually get a portion of your super back. Yep. They, they scaled it down a little bit. It used to be crazy high, but it's still powerful. Oh. I still miss those days oh, when man. I would use that in Gambit. Gambit, yes. And <laughs> I would, I would, so no lie, back in the day before this got nerfed, back in my day. I would use Blade Barrage. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would use Blade Barrage on the boss, hit it with like all of my shots, and then I would end up getting a full super back. Yeah, it took like seconds. It was crazy. It, not even seconds. I had like it by the, the time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. By the time I landed on the ground, I had another one ready to go. That's crazy. It was glorious. Yep, the good old days. Yeah. Back when yeah. Destiny was a little much easier. <laughs> that's when they uh, decided to nerf it because they were like, hey, this is kind of crazy. Well, people were melting so, bosses in Gambit and people were getting pissed. Because if you didn't have Shards of Gallon or, or that kind of a hunter on your team, you were at a big disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yep, for sure. Um, one thing I did want to note real quick, though, uh, is that um, Zer has two sets of armor on sale this week. So if you're in the transmog crowd, uh, you might want to go ahead and pick up the illicit uh, hmm. set that they have. So this was from uh, Gambit Prime days. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The snakes was the red up on, set. Your, on your body. Yeah. Yeah, this was the red set. So it was the I'm like, set. Nice. ooh, yeah, nice, exactly. <clears throat> um, so I mean, a, a floor for end game content. Oof. I would say, just but though my two cents, a really good linear fusion rifle will go a long way for DPS. And and, and you got several options. The Taipan, yes, even that one you can the- get very easily right now. Yeah, that's the new flavor of the month, actually, mm-hmm. right and there. It's, and it's arc, and it's arc. Yeah. Um, I mean, oof. I'm just so okay. So Rodimus started some shit uh, a no. couple weeks ago. No way. Oh my heart! <laughs> I can't take it. Who'd have thunk it? So yeah. So he started some shit a couple weeks ago. And he was saying that basically that you need a lot of stuff in order to do a GM. Well, people, uh, three people went into the GM. It was Mo, Gohawks, and Soccer. Granted, I'm going to say probably if I'm a five percenter, these guys are probably like two percenters. Mm-hmm. Um, and they only went in with basically the uh, the mods for it and no exotics on armor or, uh, weapons. So they just went in with the champion mods and they did it. Nice. It was like 36 minutes and it was the craziest thing that I had ever seen where I'm like, Oh my God, this is insane. But they did it and. You know, it is possible just to do it with the mods, uh, the uh, champion mods. Right. But that being said, don't do it. Why make it hard on yourself? Those guys exactly. are those guys are one percenters. So I mean, they had the knowledge of knowing how to get away from the bosses and stuff. They, exactly they were right. Players. They, they have the experience for it, um, not to rekindle this argument right, right. and all that good jazz. But, um, so basically, I mean, there isn't really a floor that I would say because the floor is different for everyone. Mm-hmm. It's going to be different because you may have a weapon that nobody else does. Um, I would say that, I mean, I would say pretty much for in-game stuff, I include raids with that. Not, I mean, master is part of it, but master is like way beyond in-game, I would say. Um, so what I would say would be try to spec into survivability stuff, resilience, recovery. Yep. Uh, um, those are the main things. 
Um, also, like, depending on your mod situation, I would say look at um, going with maybe cards with light stuff. Mm-hmm. And go with um, the void one that is... What is the void one? I think it's a well of utility is a one reaping well maker is another enduring wells. Uh, what's the hell is the name of that one? Oh, protective light is a charge with light one. That's the one I was thinking. Mm-hmm. I was going to say those, those are two different mods. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Those yeah. I was, I got sidetracked here. Right. Um, but there is a fun thing though. I think it's broken right now, but elemental charge where basically you become charged with light by picking up an elemental well. Oh, okay. Now, here's the thing is they added a tweak to this. If the element, and this is new, I think, for this season, if the elemental well's elemental type or element type matches your subclass element, you gain two stacks of charge with light. Hmm. And only one if you don't? Right. So if you're running void and you get an arc one, you're only going to get one stack. Yeah. But the thing is, though, is that think about this now. If you... I mean, if you're running Void Lock and you run Weeping, Reaping Wallmaker, which mm-hmm. means that you put down your class ability. Yeah. And then you get a kill. You're going to get, you know, easily one Void well right from there. Right. And then you figure you throw on maybe Bountiful Wells. Now you've just doubled that. So now you get, you know, you put down your Rift, you kill or throw. Well. Right. You get two void mm-hmm. for your void class. Um, like for my solar build, I'm actually running, uh, what is it here? Uh, well of ordinance now where it gives me extra grenade damage. Um, but I'm also running, uh, melee wall maker too. So oh, okay. I'm using my claws of the Ahamkara. I'm using celestial fire. Smacking people with that, causing wells to pop up, and then uh, bountiful wells, elemental charge, and the one that I forgot the name of, again, uh, effective light. Right, right. And then there's other things you can do with that too. So, I mean, you could just go with, um, what's the, a supercharged, if you have it. That's a solar one. And it gives you, I want to say up to four. Yeah. Up to a maximum of five stacks of charge with light. Okay. And then charged up is an additional one. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. You can deep dive into this. Yeah. Yeah. It's as deep as you want. So they're really, I mean, the floor depends on you. Um, what I would say is that if you're interested in this and your floor and that kind of thing, um, throw it out there uh, in our build a guardian channel. And then we can say like, okay, so what do you have? What are you looking at doing? Things like that. Mm-hmm. I wanted to add one more thing before we moved on is, um, when I did my mod video on my YouTube channel, I had some people comment that, this is why I don't play Destiny anymore because I have to go to Ada One. I don't have any of the mods. Keep in mind the way the new Arc Solar and Void 3.0 works, and, and Stasis. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of combinations that can work just as well. the The mods we're talking about here only enhance things like that, make stuff last longer, or uh, or or get stuff back faster. But they're not by all means they're not exactly required in order to do damage. Yeah, they're not mandatory. These are just yeah. little quality of life improvements here. So if you don't have all these mods, don't fret it. Do some research and find out what builds in your subclass options you have now. Look up that and start start testing stuff out. Try try a new fragment. You know, you it gives you the description of what they do. Try to just start working and trying different things, if anything. And you'll see. That alone will help. So I didn't want to discourage people from just not playing the game because they don't have this certain mod. That certain mod is not yeah. going to make or break you. It's just going to help add a little bit to what you're already doing. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. 
Um, I had a uh, speak pipe here from Nitro TJ. Let's see what he has to say. Hey guys, Nitro TJ here. Now I did have a question about the next D1 raid coming back, Wrath of the Machine. And uh, I'm very curious to see what you guys think about the exotic that will be coming with it, or that we hope that comes with it. Because Outbreak Perfected is already in the game. That was the D1 exotic. So what do they bring back? Now, I do have two kind of ideas. One Sivad, and the other one is a Iron Lord's weapon. Siva Trace Rifle. We don't have a lot of Trace Rifles, and it would be a very interesting concept. Because I feel like it'd kind of do the same thing as Outbreak Perfected, but maybe slightly different. Maybe instead of attacking them, it just adds a debuff to them that we could pair with an Outbreak Perfected, and it would do multiple damages, like different type Maybe like a like a div, but only for Outbreak Perfected, if that makes sense. And then the Iron Lord's weapon, maybe the Iron Lord's axe that we actually got to use in D one oh, yeah. Rise of Iron. And I think it was like it was like the scythe from the last season that we just had, but it would be the Iron Lord's axe and the actual exotic. Hmm. Because, I mean, we have tons of swords, but I'd love to see Bungie expand upon that and maybe make an axe. That'd be kind of cool. But just out of curiosity, what do y'all have? What do y'all guys have? Any ideas? All right. Thanks, Nitro TJ. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. What do you think, Hazel? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make a bet on this, oh. but I'm thinking the like what they'll do is they'll bring back Necrochasm. Oh, that would be fun. Even though it's a a, a hive weapon. I'm saying it's going to be Crota. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Huh. Okay. Wanna Sorry, put, TJ. Want to put a wager on that? Not right fucking now. <laughs> Come on, Warlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Make me play Warlock again? I mean, <laughs> yeah, shoot, I can't do anything else, can I? I can't make it worse. Can um, make me do bounties? Damn, let <laughs> nope. me think here. I mean, the thing about Bungie is they've got a really creative team. They'll come up with something. Yeah. And I'd, I actually like the, uh, I actually like the trace the rifle idea with the SIVA. I could have, actually have the SIVA like pouring out, you know, like building, maybe amazing. you could build it up, you know? <clears throat> Yeah, that would look amazing. And I like the idea of the axe, but I just don't think they could mm. do that with glaves and everything yeah. else that's in the game. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of beyond crazy, but I mean, <clears throat> you know, more power to them. And I guarantee you I'd play the shit out of it if that were the case. And keep in mind that, that, uh, axe used at the end of, uh, Destiny one, it, it was pretty much like the middle tree solar for the Titan. He, he, he basically slams a, a hammer down and a wave of fire travels and seeks out targets. That's pretty much what that thing was doing. That might overlap Did, a little there. Is like, what I'm saying. Didn't it split into three segments like the scythe? I don't remember. Uh, I think you could, you could hold it down for one big one or you could do smaller ones. If I remember correctly, man, I played that mission so many times. <laughs> Hard to say. Uh, you know, I've played so much Destiny 2 since then, it's hard to remember exactly without going back. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll leave it there. I think a Trace Ruffle is a good idea. Agreed, Hazel? Sure, but I think it'll be Necrochasm. <laughs> okay. Don't dash his dreams, man. Dream well, Crusher. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm the guy that was rooting for wrath for this one that's but, true um, that's true i'd like to see i'd like to see it get the uh the d2 treatment for crota i never got you the know? damn uh what was that thing you needed to make it exotic uh the, the crux i never got the crux and all the crota raids i ran i never my rng was shit i was so pissed because one one of my friends batman got it like six times 
And we even still yeah. make fun of it today. He goes, the first time he got it, he goes, Oh, what's the crux of Crota? I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Not very good memories of that weapon. So, yeah, I bet. Especially when you spent all that time to rank it up, made it into the idol on alley and you still couldn't make it into yeah. the mic. Oh God, it's so pissed. Anyway. Uh, on alley was awesome. I, you know, it was good. The legendary version was fun. Yeah, it was still fun, but anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, let me go one more, uh, speak pipe here. This is from Moose. Welcome, Moose. I think I've, I just saw him in the Discord. Yeah. All right. Here we go. See what Moose has to say. Howdy, y'all. It's your favorite cold weather cowboy, Moose. So I've got a question for you in terms of exotic weapons. Do you think there should be more unique RPM exotic weapons like Ariana's Vow with the 90 RPM hand cannon or something like the Vigilance Wing with the 50? Or the uh, five round pulse burst. Sorry if you can hear stuff in the background. I'm walking from class and they're currently doing construction on the engineering building. Also, do you think there should be more ex- uh, exotic armors that alter your, how your super works? Such as, say, like Titan arms that change Burning Maul into a giant. Flame tornado, kind of like how Celestial Nighthawk changes Golden Gun to a single super shot. Hmm. Thank y'all. Have a good one. And deuces. That's a good question. Yeah. Oof. It's a lot. It's a lot of questions. There's actually two questions. So, <clears throat> well, uh, I mean, first and foremost, I think we can all pretty much agree that we need more like super stuff in our life, you know, sure. like Celestial Nighthawk for all the classes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, that's to me, that's just a given. I mean, I absolutely, I mean, love the idea of the tornado and that kind of thing. I'm like, oh man, that's, that's what I want to know. That's going to be like question of the month type stuff. That might be good idea. Because think about that, man. What like what would you do to change one super into you mean, something like more powerful? You mean like uh, make the Slova bomb into a shatter three way Nova bomb? Oh, for there fuck's we sake. go! Oh, there we go! Come on, bring it, Bungie. Let's go. <sighs> bring back Shatter. I miss Shatter. Yeah, but you can't. You can't use Astrocyte with that. Yeah, you can. Well, it depends what it depends what the exotic does. You you can use two exotic pieces. No, I know, but I used I use Astrocyte in PvP. I don't use it in PvE. So uh, you wouldn't use Shatter in PvE. Well, yeah, uh, it's not as important. Ooh, super. I mean, that'd be cool, but you know, you only have limited range with Shatter too. So I don't know. I'd rather throw a big Slova mm-hmm. at a at a control point and watch everybody scatter like rats. Well, I go take the point. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and yeah, <clears throat> I like that. Yeah. So, what do you think about the other part of his question there the about weapon the RPMs mm-hmm. and wh- how they fire things like that? But I'm not a big Ariana's Val user mainly because I hate hand cannons. But you know, it's kind of like a sniper rifle, for really. If you think about it, I've used it. I've tried it out. It's just a little slow for me. Um, what was yeah. the other weapon he mentioned? The, um, vigilance wing. No, nah, I love the vigilance wing. I love the, I love hybrid weapons like that, especially if it's a pulse rifle. So I'm more on board with something like that. Uh, I, do you remember that one auto rifle that you got from the Titan mission on Destiny One where, uh, when you were behind a barrier, it fired like ultra fast, but then if you didn't have a barrier, uh, when you weren't behind cover, it would just fire regularly. An auto rifle like that. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I don't have my, I don't have it. Fabian for, strategy. That, I, I love that rifle, man. That was, that was one. It, it changed amazing. It did. It was a, it was a very fun weapon to use too. And I, I'm not a big Titan fan, but you can only use on Titan, but it is, um, that's the one time I played Titan because, and did the mission because I wanted that Fabian strategy. And anytime I was behind cover, which let's face it in crucible, you're behind cover a lot. It would fire ultra fast and it would, I think it would even reload itself. It was crazy, man. It was crazy good. That's a good example. I hated that gun. I loved I, it. Man. I hated. I it, hated that. Gun it wasn't a, so much. It, it you know it was an auto rifle, so you had to put a lot of target, you know, a lot of 
bullets into the target. A lot of but, shots. Yeah. yeah. But it was just fu- it was just and a fun weapon to use. It felt good. Eh, it was ass. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> what do you think? Now, I mean I I'm all for it. I mean, and that's the thing is that this I mean, Bungie is just completely like wide open with what they can do. That's just it. And I mean, and they've proven time and time again that, you know, that they can do that. Mm-hmm. Now, Gator, do you remember the Laylock? I, that was one of my favorite scout rifles. I, I have tons yeah. of videos using it because I would use the, uh, Radiance Super where you could, uh, you know, respawn, revive, revive yourself. Yeah. And I would never use it in PvP because let's face it, everyone knows when you're reviving, they'd sit there and wait for you and shoot you in the head as soon as you revive. So I said, fine. I'll just use the Telelock and have ultra fast speed and accuracy. And I love that weapon. Please, Bungie, bring that one back. If you're going to bring anything back from Destiny 1, that's one I definitely want come up, want back. Scouts need a little love right now, too. Yeah, they, uh, what Bungie did for anybody who doesn't know is that in D1, uh, they basically gave, it was during Rise of Iron, I believe, and they gave each class their own unique exotic weapon. Right. Uh, I think it was the first curse for hunters. Wasn't it Fabian um, for Titan and Talela? Yeah, Fabian for, for Warlock. Yep, ex- exactly. Good times. I think it was the first curse. That sounds right. Yeah, it was an exotic. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Man, that was a pain to do that one, too, because I hated hand cannons, but you had to get multiple headshots in the Crucible, and that was tough to do with a hand cannon. Yeah, but you know what? By God, I fucking did it. I got it, too. So finally, then I put it in the vault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, All good question. Right. Great question. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for that, um, Moose. All right, Hazel. Yeah, exactly. He- he- Yep. Here's hoping Bungie listens and they uh, yeah. end up using like those ideas. That'd Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. All right. Hey, so I'm looking okay, at the uh, clock here. What else we got? Yep. A uh, quick Discord question here. A uh, question for this show from Average D2 Player. Will you both all be attempting Master King's Fall when it releases? I kind of already answered this. I won't. I'm, I'm probably not. <laughs> Mainly because uh, you can't craft adept weapons. And... Uh, I'd rather just do a, a challenge in the normal mode and get my double drops. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bungie. That's what I'll be doing. I'm going to give it a shot. Why the hell not? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's where I'm at. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, Annoyed Prime asks, hmm? question for the show. Can we load Discord back pre-update? I I took out. Okay. Let's, let's let everybody know what's going on. Discord has a new function now where you have forum channels. You know how you go back to a channel when you've been working all day and you're like, okay, I'm not scrolling up 500 messages to see what happened today. Uh, in fact, Rodimus came in one day and says, just keep someone keep me, you know, tell me what happened today. Cause I, I don't really want to scroll up and look through messages and you know, we're getting our, our discord's getting bigger. So I tried it out. I, uh, I tried it out. I, I, I put a channel <laughs> in our discord called what's on your mind. And, um, I think someone put a channel in there, uh, a topic in there that says, please delete, which I promptly deleted the post because they said to delete it. That's what I did. Uh, and then finally, no, I saw no one was really using it. It was more of, uh, in the way. So yes, I did finally delete the channel. So I, you know, I tried it. I, I tried it for several days and I didn't seem to be warmly received. So we went back to our regular channel setup. Yeah, it sucked. It it, <clears throat> it had a great idea, it had a great purpose, but it yeah. it just spread things out even worse where people had to scroll through so many more channels and we're trying to eliminate that problem right now. Yeah, I went to wish uh, Mr. Monkey a uh, happy birthday when those were in there, those mm-hmm. forum channels. Mm-hmm. And I was like, where the fuck do I wish him happy birthday? I ended up wishing him happy birthday on our announcement channel. I was like, oh shit, that's not right. <laughs> So I was like, damn it. <laughs> well, I tried so, it. I tried it. I, I always like trying new innovations. It just, it's not a fit for our discord, at least right now, right now it is. So yeah, exactly. Your, I think your wish has been granted. It. Yep. We need to find the right place. Yeah. I, I well, we're, we're, you know, we're new to this set guys. We're new to this uh, discord stuff. So we're, we're figuring yep. it out. We've only been in here for like 
five years. You know, years. um, we well, do use the, uh, the me, uh, the, I don't know, the me, the me six bot for our ranking, our, yep. uh, you know, our discord ranking. And I, uh, I was talking to a friend at bowling. I started my bowling this week and he said, um, he was showing me his discord and how they have they actually the, the bot actually has a way where you can click on a channel and then it opens up into an interest that you're a, a, like an area of interest you're interested in. Like you can click on destiny, but maybe there's a Titan channel or something, but it expands once you open it or decide to open it. I don't know. I'll look into it, but we're probably for now just going to leave things alone. So yeah. My only question for that is, does it um, allow for Rodimus to be timed out randomly? I'm sure we can time him out in any channel or just make him invisible. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. All right. Sorry, Rodimus. Um, Go ahead. We love you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Annoyed Prime asks, speak of the devil, mm. question for the show. Which class has the worst jump? I don't like the hunter. I like the glide. Warlock. Yeah, I figure. Warlock is... A nightmare. It, there's some skill involved. Yeah. It, it's hard to float up in the air for five minutes and <laughs> go like, gee, wow. Okay. I hope I hit the ground eventually. <laughs> you can just cancel your jump and you'll fall like a rock. Trust me. You have very, yeah, you have very know, good maneuverability but... as a hunter, as a, uh, damn, almost slipped. As a, yep, uh, as a hunter. No, no, yes, no, no, no. I'll let it out. I'll let it out. there. Uh, no, as a warlock, you have very good maneuverability. Whether it's blink in PvP or whether you're floating around trying to jump platforms, it's an acquired yeah, skill yeah. though. It takes time to get your head out of the Titan bubble mentality. Anyway, I thought you were going to say out of the clouds because <laughs> that's pretty much where my <laughs> head is going to be are. all that's the time. True. Yeah, true. exactly. I'm like, gee, look at me. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Wow, I'm flying around. Oh I hope nobody shoots me. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I've got one. Uh, I got a uh, speak pipe here from. Mr. Sweaty Spooks. Good to hear from you, buddy. Here we go. Nice. Hey, 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 Guardian Downcast. Sweaty Spooks here. Um, question for the show and guest. So, okay, so present day. It's Monday. So this is our last Iron Banner day uh, of our first, I'll say, week of Iron Banner in season 18. Um, so my question is this, uh, upon going into battle with the fire team intro, you know, Bungie's been messing around with the introductions a little bit, if you haven't noticed with the catch crash yet, uh, but in Crucible, um, one of the guys mentioned that our intro was actually all of our ghosts and not the guardians themselves, which I found really interesting. Um, I've been asking around about it once I kind of realized what was happening and, uh, not too many people have seen it yet. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't quick in the draw. I did not get my screen capture of it. Uh, but other folks that I've talked to have. Just curious if you've noticed this yet. And did you get your screen capture? Love yous. Love the show. Peace out, everyone. Thanks, Sweaty Spooks. Uh, yeah, I did notice it, but I didn't get the screen cap. Because uh, oh, you know, I, I, I've seen where they do the ghost. Uh, but I didn't think to do a screen cap on it. That's a good idea, actually. Do you notice it, Hazel? I have no idea what in the hell you're talking about. At the beginning of the I Iron Banner what... matches, it would, uh, you know how it usually, uh, would, would pan to each player? You know? Yeah. And then, and I then, mean, and then, I and know the, that and, they updated it. Yeah. To where it shows, like, people, like, spawning in and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And then they would end on usually the highest, uh, KDA player of the group at the end. You know, when they flashed out from the group. But yeah, I did notice they were actually, uh, it actually did focus on the ghost, not the player. So yeah, I remember I saw it. I don't know if it's just an Iron Banner thing. I'll have to play some Crucible this weekend and see if they do it in regular Crucible or Trials even. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. Curious. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm all up, I'm all for, I mean, Bungie, like, Throwing sure. in weird, wacky shit like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, what was it? The, uh, I want to say it was in D2 that for some reason, like when people would fly into the tower, it was playing, um, the King's Fall music. Mm -hmm. This is back like two years ago or three years ago. Right. And it was just like the weirdest thing. Bungie never addressed it either. 
Hmm. So, interesting. All right. So, um, here we are. Okay. Actually, Average D2 player asked about Div 2 if um, it needed a nerf as well. Okay. So, uh, we answered that one, too. Credit where credit's due. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uncle Scumdeath, Speakpipe Master, asks, What's the most expensive repair you've had on your vehicle? Well, I can answer that one. I uh, I had to redo some parts of my diesel truck. I have a, a 2006 F250. It has uh, it has very low miles. It only has like 60,000 miles on it. But the... Uh, the oil cooler, think of a graham cracker, has like different layers. The coolant actually is pumped through a graham cracker like a little brick, and it sits in the oil sump in the engine in the middle. And um, it, it was a defective. It, it broke, and the coolant was mixing with the oil. So when I look at my coolant tank, it was black, not coolant. So I, uh, instead of repair, you know, replacing the stock one, I actually bought a bypass unit that puts the cooler on the outside. It's called Bulletproof Diesel. They're based out of Arizona. Make fantastic project products, by the way. But I had an, uh, had some other things, other modifications done to it too. It was about uh, fifty eight hundred dollars to do that. That's been my most expensive repair. But you know what though? I'll get another five or six years out of that truck, so it was worth the money, and it makes money for me. So, what about you? Holy shit! Mm-hmm. Um. Well, it's never a good thing when you take it in. So, um, there's a, like, when I was growing up, there was a, like, a garage that my dad always took the cars to. Right. And, um, it's, I had my first job. So I was a security guard and everything else. I thought I was the shit because I had a job that paid me decent. And, um, it's never a good thing when, See, basically everything that I do in this life, I, uh, have learned basically through what not to do. And, um, it's never a good thing when the, the guy working on your car goes, Hey, um, so you have two choices. We can either fix it for pretty much what it's worth, or, uh, you can buy a new car and just leave this one here and we'll scrap it for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that was when I learned, um, basically that you need to give a car an oil change and you need to do a tune up every now and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oil change, big time, big time important. If there's yeah. one thing you do, yeah. oil change. Yeah. Every 5,000. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the damnedest thing, mm. you know, um, that also told me a lot about like what my dad never told me about cars. Uh, so yeah, don't feel bad. I've, I've taught both my kids and they still come to me. Dad, I need to check the oil. We'll check the oil then. Oh shit. See, yeah, I know how to do that. I can change a tire. Yeah. I can, I mean, yeah, I see. I taught them I'm, all that. I took the time on a weekend and taught them how to do it because I know that if they got stranded somewhere, they would at least know the ins and outs basics of the vehicle and not get taken advantage of too. So, um, yeah, they, they weren't listening. So don't feel bad, man. Well, I was young. I was stupid. So I'm, I'm making sure that my daughter knows all the things. Like I took her to, so, uh, my wife, uh, we, like my daughter and I, we took her to, well, I took my daughter to the car wash. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, so here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean mom's car for her birthday. Like vacuum it and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Okay, why are we doing this? And that's when I was like, I kind of got a smile on my face. I was like, hey, I'm, I get to teach her something. A teachable moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I hit her at the end with, well, I'm like, you know, like when you get old enough, you can have this car. You can have mom's car. And she looked at me and she's like, really? It's <laughs> like, yeah. She's like, I don't want it. <laughs> what? He doesn't want it. What the no. hell? No. She told me she wants a truck. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, look at that shit. All right. So I was like, oh, you are your father's child. After all. <laughs> nice. So, <clears throat> yeah. 
times. Yeah. Uh, okay. I got one here from Hammer Crasher 32. Hey, Hammer Crasher 32 here. So I went to uh, the bus parking lot with my kids the other day. We, we rode over there on our bikes and we were riding around doing stuff in the parking lot. And then my, uh, my youngest, he's eight and, uh, he's, he, he's fast as fuck. Um, and, uh, he wanted to do a foot race across the, the parking lot. So, okay, I'll race you. And, uh, we start racing, you know, we, we get, get started and, and my 10 year old gives us the, the go and we start running and I'm wearing vans, flat, unsupportive, horrible vans. And, uh, I'm, I'm beating them, but then I turn the burners on because I have to show them what's up, Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, I won, but at a price, I I could not walk right for like three days after that. (laughs) I I think it's the hip flexors, whatever those muscles are in the front of your hips. Oh my God, they hurt so bad. (laughs) Is there anything that you used to be able to do? Like, uh, you know, like run real fast. That you can still kind of do, but uh, when you do, you pay for now. Just wondering. Hazel? I'll let you answer that one first. Oh, man. Um, well, we have a saying here in our house. Uh, Dad is not a jungle gym. Hmm. Uh, yeah, my daughter likes to climb all over me oh, and hang from my arms hmm. and my legs and... You know, put me in headlocks, all that good stuff. And my wife just looks at us and goes like, she's like, you're going to hurt your dad. And like, I'll be damned. She, she fucking does on occasion. And it's like, hmm. and then my wife just laughs. She's just like, you're a dumbass. You deserve this. So, <laughs> Jeez. um, I was always faster than my kids. My son, hell, my son ran track. I still was faster than him. It's probably maybe from my baseball years, but, uh, my knees probably wouldn't allow me to go full, full force right now. I mean, I jog, uh, and I can turn the burners on for about, about 30 seconds. That's about all I got. Then the gas is gone. And, um, my biggest fear is, um, my hamstrings are pretty strong, but, uh, I feel the hip flexor thing because I sit in an office chair a lot. Uh, it's not good for your hip flexors. So, I could see that happening to me, Hammer Crasher, so don't feel bad, man. Yeah. But no, I, I never let my kids win. No, they no, no. you don't. That's life. You have to fix fa- My they, dad was always faster. It. My dad was always faster. He always beat me at chess, and he was always faster than me when I tried to run. And I mean he's seventy seven now, so I'm sure I cannot run him now, but my dad was fast, man. I hope so. My dad ran in track too. But uh yeah, I, I, you know, it was something to strive for. He was my Superman, or he is my Superman. So, yeah. No, don't let up. Yeah, don't of roll it off the gas. No, 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 no. no. So Come on, that's, who would do that? That's a teachable moment. There you go. Uh, okay, Hazel. Yeah. What else we got in the Discord? Dear, yeah. Dear God, let like, up. Come on. No. Yeah. Hey, no. you're gonna hurt. You're gonna hurt. I mean, that's good. You need to work those muscles anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, my wife, she just, I mean, she's, she's only competitive against me. <laughs> but if it comes to ad, she's just like, ah, eh, whatever. Just, you know, she's you know, mom. Oh, I lost. Oh, darn. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm like, you know, fighting her tooth and nail. Like, you know, you're not going <laughs> to fucking beat me, kid. So, fish her down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just trip her. Like, oh, hey. <laughs> Watch out for that. That's how life works. You got to get back up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, quick question here uh, from Sage of Databio. Databio. Iced coffee or hot? Always hot. I don't, I'm not a fan. I, I mean, I've drank it before if it's pre made, but I don't, I'm not going to brew it. No. Mm, it's coffee. I'll take it either way. Mm, I don't like it cold. Okay. Yeah. And question asked, question uh, answered. Oh, by the way, Grackle had a great answer for um, what is the, uh, like, who's the third party that's coming in? Third party. Like, 
third host for the season for the season. Oh, oh, oh! What did he say? Panics. Oh God, no. Yeah, exactly. No, no crap. Um, no, just can you can you um can you time him out for me, please? Uh, oh my God, that's awesome! Uh, all right. Um, ooh, okay. Ronan Red Lion asks question for the show. Following up on the question about designing an emote, now come up with a new finisher. I'd personally love for them to release a finisher based on Akuma's Raging Demon from Street Fighter. I'm trying to remember what that was. Do you remember? I'm not going to pretend like I know. I, I'm not. I, I don't remember that one. Um, I know there was a hyper finisher. I, I'm not going to speculate. Um, hmm. I mean, I can get funny with this. <laughs> I about turn him around and kick him in the ass. Give him a push. <laughs> like, get out of here, kid. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. Kick them in the nuts, maybe? If they had nuts? I don't know. They're falling. I don't know where their testes are. Or taken. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I think we have some really good finishers already. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember the first one that I liked, and that was the, uh, the Superman punch. Mm hmm. All right. I got to, I got to follow up on that one. On your finishers. Okay. Do you favorite all of them so it's random when you do a finisher? No. Oh, man. I got them all. I just- What kind I, of shit is that? I make them all favorite. Then that way it's random. I'm surprised whatever finisher I do. It's pretty cool. Try yeah. it. Nope. All right, whatever. I have one finisher that I use for pretty much everything. What's that? Actually, two. Valkyrian Impaler is my favorite. Is that the, the one from uh, Warmind? Yep. Okay. Exactly. That's Where good. you jump up in the air, you pull your arm back, mm-hmm. and just launch it. It's a good one. Yeah. My favorite. It's just violent. There, there is one I do. I was using all the time where the, it's basically you basically put their, put a gun to their head like a pistol. I still like that one. That's my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, there's the one from this season that's like that. Is it? Uh, oh, flurry. yeah. Yeah. Flurry. It's a, dip, it's a, it's a, uh, it is a flintlock pistol in it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it looked different. Yeah. I got that one too. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, I mean, I like them. Uh, the one I really want to get is the ricochet disc for the Titan. Okay. How you throw your shield up and then you punch it at them. Oh man. That'd be fun to watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A lot of animation. Okay. Um, well, let's see if we can figure out who this is from. Yeah, it's, this is minor question for the show. Do you think with the Patreon members and everything else going on, you guys should change your saying from amateur bullshit to semi-professional bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Have a good one. Later. <laughs> Uh, what do you think, Hazel? We semi-professional yet? I don't know if we've gotten that far. No, we're we're not. We're still pretty amateur. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Miner. Yeah, sorry to disappoint you, man. Yeah, yeah. No, um, we've just conned people into doing the Patreon. Yeah. We love you though. Yeah. Uh, I I've got plenty of speak pipes, but I want to make sure you get through your questions. Mother, we got like a shit ton. I know. Of questions, I know. Dude. I'm I'm actually hitting the penned up question Good. now just because don't don't tell anybody of... that man I'll have to edit that out. Oh shit! Damn it! All right, okay. All right, uh, Queen Slayer. Mm-hmm. Welcome, girlfriend of Fat Blinsky. Fat Blinsky. Oh, by the way, oh. they're going to be at uh, Halloween Horror Nights in October in Orlando. Yeah. I'm, I might I might be there to meet up with them. We'll see. I usually do. Uh, I usually meet up. I go with my daughter usually. It's kind of a a yearly event. Uh, if her boyfriend bails, I'm, I'll definitely see if I can make that happen. Dude, I don't understand how you're going to be going to that shit. Oh, I love that stuff, man. Oh, you, well, if you're into, you're not into you, spiders, don't go. <laughs> don't go, you man. Were, you were like freaking out over what? Like paranormal activity. 
I can't oh. imagine you going into. Oh yeah, but it's fake, man. There's nothing. I mean, the the haunted houses are really cool. They got some good ones this year, but uh, no, it's it's. I'm kind of. I put on the brave face for my daughter. She clings to me, you know. When they they get real dark and stuff reaches out and grabs you and stuff, she doesn't like that. But uh, it's a it's a fun uh, it's a fun scare though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll see if it happens. Uh, her boyfriend might go with her this year, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely spiders there. It's not good. Yeah, can I? Can I'm, I get. I'm out. That's funny. You should mention. I mentioned spiders. My wife sent me a picture today. They have their. They have like a box. They keep all the flagpole rope in for her school. And she goes, "What are these uh, eggs? What are these eggs from?" And I said, "Honey." That's those are black widow eggs. She goes, Ooh, no shit. way. I said, how many people have reached in and grabbed that rope? She goes, well, it, no one's been doing it lately, so I've just I have to clean these out. I'm like, and um, yeah, I said, well, be careful. Whoever reaches in there is going to be in for a nice, painful bite. So, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of spiders, okay, <sighs> yeah, moving moving the hell on. All right, topic. Okay, so Queen Slayer goes on to ask. What are your preferred shaders or colors for your armor and weapons? Oh, being that it is cancer, a childhood cancer awareness month, this is an easy question, an easy answer yeah. for me. Uh, right now, um, actually, I like Iron Wolf because it's a silver gold, but because it's uh, because it's cancer awareness month, I'm using a actually Callus's Shadow. On one setup, and I'm using uh, uh, Kalish's Treasured on the other. It's kind of a little more of a bronzy gold. It's more of a true gold. Kalish's Shadow is more of a bright gold. So that's mine. I've always liked gold. Yeah. What do you, yeah, you want? My, uh, my Titan on in D1 is decked out in gold. Um. Well, I'm running Kalish's Treasured. Mm-hmm. But on my warlock, but there's one, I'm trying to find it here. It was like surprising to me where I was like, Ooh, like that's gold too. Um, it's on my Titan. There is a new shader. It just came out. That is pretty gold too. From your season pass or maybe that's what season I'm pass. It's, I want to say it's ancient something. I'm not, I don't have it in front of me here. Does it list all your ancient in- wisdom? Wisdom. That's it. It's a pretty decent yeah, game. That, that might be it, actually. Um, but yeah, it surprised me. I was like, oh my God, there's gold in there. Mm-hmm. And it's a fair amount of gold, too. So It is. Yeah, so I have that on my Titan. Very nice. And then uh, on my weapons, I pretty much just use like gold or something shiny. Kalos' treasure looks good on a lot of weapons. I use that on a lot yeah. of my stuff too. Mainly so I can identify it as they're my ultimate favorite weapons. I usually put them gold. Yeah. I, I don't know about that. I know. Uh, one fun one though, mm-hmm. um, that I'm like once childhood cancer is passed, right? I'm going to use the scarlet semblance. What color is that? It's basically like a white and it has like a blood. Like a like a blood splatter all over it. Ooh, okay. Well, we are going into October. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, yep, cool. There you go. Check out that one, y'all. Uh, let's see. All right, you know it's it's we got to do one from Rodimus. So let's uh, I'm trying to it's like Russian roulette here. Which one do I pick? Which one do I pick? Let's go with this one. Dude, where's my car? Okay, that was a good one. I I didn't get shot. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I think that was meant for minor last week. (laughs) Sorry. I don't know. I think it might just be, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, it's in the driveway. Um. Yeah, exactly. It's where you left it last. Okay. So I hope you find it. Yeah, man. Hey, a uh, quick note. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Volt Shot. 
Uh, that's uh, the new scout rifle, right? From Season of Plunder? Uh, well, it's a perk on it. So. Oh. Yeah. What, uh, explain it, to the new people. I mean, I know what it is, of course, but for the for the layman or the new people out there, what what is Volt Shot? It's pretty fucking nasty. Uh, okay, so you get a kill with a weapon with a Volt Shot, and then you reload, mm-hmm. and reloading this weapon after defeating a target overcharges this weapon for a short period of time, causing it to jolt on its next hit. Yeah, and that's one of the now, key phrases this this season, jolt. Yep. Now, just so you know, this jolt takes up like half the screen. What? Yeah. Damn. This shit is nutty. I mean, yeah, I knew that. <clears throat> uh-huh. Right. No, I did. Yeah. 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 It does. It takes up half the screen. It's just like the flash? jolt and shit. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, like I said, uh, yeah, it does kind of, doesn't it? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Okay. It's just ad killing craziness. Yeah. Area effects. Um, nice. Okay. Uh, quick question for you. Mm-hmm. Infernius, question for the show. Which pirate do you prefer? A, Captain Jack Sparrow. Hey, it's a sparrow, so you can ride on it too. Oh. B, Captain Jake and the Neverland Pirates. C. Blackbeard. Yeah, I'm gonna go old school. I'm going Blackbeard. Uh, I know those other two, but yeah, uh, yeah, Jack Sparrow. Nah, I'm all right. I'm all right. What? Yeah, I'm good. Captain Jack for the win. Okay, come on, all right. come on, come on. Uh, you know what I'm? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to put that sound bite of you doing an interpretation or uh, doing a doing a, a version of Captain Jack Sparrow right here. You know what a good idea would be? Bank your moats. There we go. Does that even exist? It does. I have that sound bite. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> uh, what, what's the sound? To, All right, this is uh, I, I need to I need to quit with the sake. This is one hour, one hour and six minutes into community questions. If you want to look for it later. All right, just say a minute five. All right, uh, what do you think? One more each. Yeah. Okay. You want to do it, or you want me to finish? I'll, I'll finish out with uh, with my speak pipe. We'll go one more in the Discord. Okay. Um. Uh, Mo, Mo must have slept. Yeah, I don't have a speak pipe from Mo. Shut up. Oh, shit. Damn it. Okay, we have a pinned question here. No, uh, no, so no. We, no. Have, we have a question. We don't know. We don't know what's no pins. No. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Just ignore me. No, ignore no, me. Uh, oh, uh, here, I'll do it again. Uh, okay, Hazel, one more question out of the Discord. What do we got? Yeah. Um, yeah, completely anonymous question here. Uh, yeah, don't look into this. Uh, question from Hammer Crasher 32. Question for the show. Top five movies for you right now. Oh my God. Really? Mine are Children of Men, Bloodsport, The Blood of Heroes, Shawshank Redemption, and The War. We need to do a movie segment for the end of the year or maybe first of the year or something. Well, I've already got a. I've already list. got a list of right, good. things like TV shows that oh, I've okay. been watching and stuff. We'll have top so. TV maybe and top movies maybe, something like that. Yeah, exactly. We'll something. Okay. Yeah, that'll be when uh, Bungie like takes off the weeks. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Good time for that. Man, hold on. Let me let me grab my AMC Stubbs thing here and I'll tell me what movies I've been watching lately. Because sometimes I don't remember. It's not that they're not good. It's just... Well, I did see a movie last week called uh, 3,000 Years of Longing. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, How was that? That was a very sweet movie. It was a very good movie. And I, I'm not saying sweet like girly sweet, but no, it was a very it's a very good movie. It was well written. Uh, you know, it had Eldris El- uh, 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 Eldris, uh, Idris Elba, Idris Elba and um, uh, Tilda Swinton. Really well written, really, really good movie. 
fact, I wish I went and saw it with my parents, but we didn't. But that that was one I saw. It was very good. Uh, lately, looking through my uh, Where the Crawdads Sing, that was very good. That was a good movie. Hmm. If we're talking right now. I really like Thor: Love and Thunder, and uh, the Black Phone. That was very really? good too. Black Phone was awesome. That was a great movie. Super glad to hear that. Yeah, it was a great I'm movie. I'm going to be Ethan checking Hawk. that out next week. Yeah, Ethan so. Hawke was fantastic in it. Okay, there's my five. What do you got? Okay. My five, uh, just off kind of the top of my head, a.k.a. in the time it took him to say his, hmm. um, everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, that was a good movie. That was fucking bonkers. I have to say the Batman. Oh, I, I, yeah, I missed that one. That was good. I don't know how you could miss it. I, I just, so, I was thinking, I was looking a at a ton of movies. I man. was looking at recent stuff I've been watching. That's what he asked. So that's what I was looking up. And I know yeah. you just saw it on, yeah, HBO probably. Oh, well, I've seen it like three or four times. So. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. I, um, I, I was, well, I didn't have that one. Yeah. Part of me wants to say, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to say RRR. What? Yeah. You should watch it. It, it. It's on Netflix. It's called RRR. And what's this movie about? Um, <laughs> um, it's a, it's an action movie. It's not like, it's not crazy violent and things like that. It's just, uh, Basically, it's a Hindi movie, so it's subtitled. Oh, okay. But um, don't let that dissuade you. No, it's not. Uh, they they don't talk too much in the movie. Actually, it's a lot of action. It's uh, there's some story to it. Okay. And um, it is basically it's told from basically the perspective of these two heroes for Indian culture, if they actually lived at the same time and basically uh, fought the British together. Oh, okay. So it would be similar to maybe George Washington and Martin Luther King Jr. partnering up and taking on the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, wow. Okay. It's It's absurd. But it was really fun, and it just kept cranking the knob before craziness up. And by the end, it was like so absurd that you were okay with it. You're just like you've accepted, like, it. hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like it. They keep increasing it gradually throughout the entire movie. Hmm. Um, so R R R. Elvis. Oh yes, that damn it! I, I that was great too. Uh, and then I'm going to add a movie to my to my list that I have not seen yet, but I'm going to say it anyway because from what I've heard is it just sounds bonkers anyway. So it sounds right up my alley and I'm probably going to go see it maybe this weekend. Barbarian. Yes. Uh who was it? Was it uh Commando was telling me. He he Commando. went to it yep. just begrudgingly. His wife dragged him to it. And he said, "Man, it was surprisingly good." And unfortunately, it's already out of our theater. But uh yeah, I'm hoping it'll come to like HBO or something because I do want to see it. He said it was surprisingly good. It was a light horror yeah. too. Yeah, so I'm going to add it to my list already. Um, mm-hmm. just because I really, really want to see it because I, I appreciate everybody in the movie. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, that this should be good. Um, I wanted to mention one more thing while we're on the subject of movies. Uh, my wife and I just came back, in fact, from tonight. Before we did the podcast, we saw the uh, the new uh, David Bowie documentary called Moon Age Daydream. Other than I felt like I was on an acid trip the whole movie. It's very much a visual movie. And they blare the music. I think they do it purposely to make you feel like you're right there in the audience at his concerts. But um, at first, we started, we started watching it. It was like, okay, what the hell? Where's the structure of this movie? Where are we going with this? And then it then it started flowing into an actual documentary. So I do know for a fact this is going to be on HBO Max. So just keep your eye on this one if you're going to watch a documentary. You might want to watch this one. It's really good. It's not going to feel like you were in the theater with the blaring music and stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's one to keep an eye out for as it comes out. Because it was very good. It's very well done. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Let's go out with uh, this one from uh, 
There's another one here from TJ Nitro. Hey guys, Nitro TJ here. And I'm curious because me and my girlfriend are looking for our first apartment. And I mean, we know where we want to live, but we're trying to figure out things we should probably stay away from and maybe things we should look for in our first apartment. So if y'all have any helpful tips for people like me who is moving into their first apartment. But yeah, I was just curious if y'all had any advice for me. That'd be great. Thanks. I said TJ Nitro. I meant Nitro TJ. Thanks for that question. Um, have you done many, have you done much apartment dwelling, Hazel? Yeah. I, I've yeah, only done, uh, I, I did one for five months of my seven month lease and I was out. I, w- I got a house, so I'm probably not yeah. qualified here. Yeah. Um, we lived in an apartment for maybe two or three years when we first got married. Okay. And, um, there was actually like three different apartments that we were looking at cause we were just trying to like, you know, save money and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, we went to all three of them. We were like, you know, these are all three great and everything else. We went off of price and everything. And then I think it was her parents. They suggested like, well, just go buy them at night and just see how they are. I'm That's like, what the idea. fuck? It's a good idea. Like, what, what, what the hell is this bullshit? What looking are you talking lighting. about? Yeah. You're looking for external lighting. Well, just to see how it is at night. That's true <clears> too. <throat> yeah. Um, now, I mean, granted, it is just one night that we drove by these places, but uh, there were cop cars outside of one. Mm. And I'm like, okay, that's not a good endorsement. Um, and then the other one, like you said, was the lighting. There was no lights outside. Mm. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not a good sign. I'm like, where, where are the lights? And um, yeah, we ended up going with a place that was well lit. And no cop cars outside. Yeah, I would say also look around, especially if it has that, like external porches. Uh, if there's a bunch of like junk pipe piled up in porches or outdoor little patios and stuff. Yeah. yeah that's, that's not a good sign either. Yeah. Just look at the neighbors and yeah, see. People have pride. Yeah. Exactly. You know, also, I mean, depending on how much it is, is typically indicative of. What the area area is. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, and I'll tell you, rents have gone up here. I don't know about there, but my daughter got a house because they raised her rent like $700 a month. They're like, well, we can have a mortgage payment for that. And that's what they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we are right now. We're like, we want to buy a house, Mm -hmm. but our mortgage payment right now is cheaper than. Yeah. Than anything. Yeah. I mean, because we could, we could sell our house. Mm hmm make like a ton of money for it. Right. But then we'd have to live in a apartment paying more than our mortgage right now. Mm. And then yeah. interest rates are higher and it's just like absurd. The stuff that's going on right now. Yeah. All right. So this is, this is Norm's money, money there, corner here. There it is. So Hazel's money. Yeah. Oh, here, I'll put a soundbite here of Hazel saying something about your budget right here. And keep a goddamn ledger. I got a lot of editing to do this weekend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what did I say about a Yeah, budget? I remember all the sound bites, man. You said, you said, uh, I think you said, ha- oh. write, write a fucking budget or something. I can't remember. Isn't your <laughs> I think I did. Uh, yeah. I'll stop with that yeah. here. Yeah. No, right after you said Norm's money edition, I went, okay, it's going there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to make a note of it and make sure I don't forget. So, uh, that's awesome. Hey, everyone. Thanks for your questions. You guys blow us away. I mean, every week. I mean, I know there's several here, like one from Werewolf we got. We just didn't have time to answer it this week. We just ran out of time. And um, we'll get to it next week. It won't won't not go anywhere. It'll be right here waiting for you. So uh, I believe we have, uh, is it Hawk Slayer next week? That is correct. We have Hawk Slayer coming next week. So, uh, yeah, we want to save some of these questions for him. Curious what he says to them. So, uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much, and um, we'll be right back. Yo, what up, what up, what up? Native Raider here, and you're listening to Guardian Downcast. Let's get it.
All right. Well, before we go tonight, Hazel, uh, do we have any announcements to mention? Okay. So um, I threw out two scrims, one for next Thursday, I think, or no, no I'm sorry, next Wednesday. Um, and then uh, one for, I want to say it's uh, October 1st, possibly, yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So Saturday at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. So, um, and then I'm looking at doing another one, um, and it'll probably be on maybe like a Sunday afternoon for our UK people. Nice. Yeah. Very so, cool. Uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, I will throw out a raid, uh, this week sometime. Um, I need to get back in there and do some stuff. So, uh, get some red boxes. You craft some weapons. Exactly. No, I'm serious. Yes. Craft those weapons. <laughs> All right, I won't get back into last yeah. week's conversation. Yeah. I was here, I was listening to that back this week. I was like, man, we really dig in, Same. don't we? We really yeah. dig into our, our, we, we tried to be a little more, uh, civil tonight. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we tend to, something like that. Yeah. We, we tend to grab on to our point of view and hold on for dear life. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, to say the least. Yeah. There's not much else to say. Besides, there really yeah. isn't. There really isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's spirited. You it know? is. Yes. That's the important thing. Well, that's the passionate part. Remember we mentioned at the top in our intro, just as passionate about it today as we were back then. That That's where the passion is. Definitely true. Yep. Uh, I just want to mention, we have our question of the month. Uh, we extended it from August into September. Uh, we had the new season pop up and uh, I figured, you know what? Let's go ahead and extend it and let people think about it and... And, uh, the question is, you know, we've heard all the terms casual, try hard, try hard, hardcore, serious, casual, hobbyist, whatever. Not that that's a label or anything, but the question for, for August and September is, I need a burp. Okay. As, uh, as you've played Destiny, what kind of player do you consider yourself? And not only that, but why? Why do you, why do you classify yourself as that kind of player? We'll need everyone's answers by Wednesday, September 28th. And, uh, on episode 167, Hazel and I will play the answers from the speak pipes and we'll also include our answers in our discord channel and, um, to the, uh, in the discord channel is question of the month channel in our discord, by the way, or you can go to our speak pipe. It's speakpipe.com slash guardian down cast all one word Hades. Uh, I'll have the links obviously to both of these, uh, areas in our show description right down there. And, uh, just know. We'll be having another drawing for a $25 Amazon gift card, but the speak pipe answers will be entered into two additional drawings for podcast merch, which uh, you can get, by the way, from our store. It's uh, on designedbyhumans.com. Just search for Guardian Outcast. We have all kinds of little stuff you can consider looking at. And uh, I do want to give a shout out to our Patreon community. Uh, especially to our Dungeon Champion patrons. That would be Mr. Scoot. And Mr. Scarlet KM, thank you, sirs. And, and our raid boss patrons, Jealous and Frostbite. Thanks for your support, guys. Uh, and we, I, I believe this was a new feature they just offered on Patreon. A uh, miner was mentioning this to us. If you pay for the year, you say 15%. Uh, I, I haven't tried this myself, but I guess it's there have different options out there on how to pay. So. Just throwing that out there. A quick thank you to all our patrons out or I keep saying that. Just a quick thank you to all our patrons out there. You know who you are. The support goes right back into those drawings like we're having for our question of the month, our uh, all our podcast merch that we're handing out in our drawings, and uh we have our end of the year speed uh speed run question ideas uh drawings. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. We just throw it right back into the community yeah. and it allows Hazel and I not to have to pay for all these extra services. Uh, in podcasting, like our, our hosting services for, you know, our podcast. So all we have to do is worry about just creating content. So thank you. And if you see those bright gold rolls and, um, what we call them, bright gold, uh, names in the discord names. Yeah. Reach out and say thanks because they're, they're the ones helping to support this community. And of course, everyone, of course, is supporting the community by listening and participating. But, uh, special thanks to all those guys and gals. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you all. Want to mention also, we do have another podcast. It comes out every two weeks. It's called uh, Playing Favorites. Yeah, as Hazel would say, if you have a favorite thing, I bet there's a story behind it. And uh, Hazel and I also end with one of our favorite stories for the month. Not Destiny related, but around entertainment, gaming, social media, pop culture, anything, stuff like that. Uh, our, we just had her in episode three just come out this week. In fact, it just came out this afternoon. And, um, yeah, we think we talked about, uh, dogs, uh, Mountain Dew, people's first cars. We talked about, um, HBO and, uh, <laughs> my God, it was, it was a great, I, I listened to it back. It was really good. It's really good. It's a shorter podcast. It's only usually about an hour long. So just want to let everybody know about that. Just search for playing favorites and you should be able to find it on whatever podcast app you have out there. Just want to remind everyone that September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So, you know, there have been a lot of posts out there for everyone to wear a gold shader on your guardian of choice out there. So, um, yeah, let's all participate in that. Show our love and support for uh, preventing childhood cancer. Well, Hazel, that's a wrap. Another episode in our collection. For our listeners out there. We have 164 other episodes with interviews from gamers all over our community. So take a look at those, especially if you're just finding out about us and do us a favor. If, if, if you do anything else, if you know a destiny player out there, tell them about our little podcast. We'd appreciate it. All right, Hazel, where can people find you? Good sir. All right. They can find me on the interwebs at Hazel NT. Anywhere and everywhere except for Twitch, where I never stream, and it's the Hazel NT. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna correct it. I mean, I'll help I, you set it up, man. Come on, we'll get it fixed. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I need to take myself out of the bot first. Oh, okay. Uh, because I don't want to. I don't want to like get on there and see like four like things saying, "Hey, Hazel, that's online. Hazel, that's online. <laughs> I tell Hazel, you what, that's offline. I tell you what, so. man." The, it's, it's so much fun streaming and, and everyone stops by to say, Hey, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, it's at Todd the Gator. Remember that's two D's and G A T R. You can find me on my, my, my place, um, PlayStation five. That's Gator G A T R all caps. Don't forget those underscores and spelled the very same way for my YouTube channel where I'm, uh, still posting weekly videos for all new and returning players out there in destiny. So, uh, yeah. Support me and help me out. I'm trying to get to a thousand followers by the time Lightfall comes out. So thank you for that in advance. Well, Hazel, before we go, man, uh, Uncle Scum Death has another Scum Death corner for us tonight. So here we go. Uncle Scum Death, what is going on in the UK today, brother? Hello and welcome to Scum Death Corner. This is gross, but brilliant. Um. Yesterday, I went for a piss, and before I could pull the flush, uh, my backy pouch fell out of my hoodie top and fell in the toilet into my piss. So some of my backy got damp. So I left it to dry a little bit, and uh, didn't think nothing of it, you know, I don't care. (laughs) And um, the daughter this morning, before she went work, she said, oh, I got your backy. Can I make some backy off you? I'm like, yeah, of course you can. Lovely. (laughs) So she had some backy off me, <laughs> and she's coming from work right. today. And I'm like, you know that backy that you uh, nicked off me? She's like, yeah. I'm like, it fell in my piss. <laughs> it's freaked her right out. So, uh, yeah, tell you what, one nil to me. Lovely. I'm not a bit of a gross bastard, but who gives a fuck, eh? <laughs> I love you all. Bye. Smoke your own backy. Don't borrow anyone else's. Or well, actually, just don't smoke. It's no good for your health. <laughs> but sometimes I even freak myself out. <laughs> oh shit! Oh man, well, that's, that I makes up for that. Guy. That makes up for that PS5 cord they took from him, right? Last couple of times. There you go. Now they're even. Yeah. Just, yeah. just sink it in your own pee, and there you go. There you go. Probably had, yeah, probably smelled a little different, didn't it? Uh, hey, everyone, continue to be safe out there. More importantly, hey, take care of one another. The weight of the world was on your shoulders, and still you triumphed. Marvelous. Thank you all so very much for listening. And later, Guardian. It toddled.
Bank them moats. Let's bang some knuckles. You could end this bloody game if you bank your moats. Do it. Tap their controller, man. Come on. There's no shame in that. Mm-hmm.